We'll start in just a minute. We're just waiting for some of the AV. And, and in fact, we can start right now um, with some, some um, quick introductions and a couple of administrative details. Uh, so Thomas Schneider, the Honorary Host Country Co-Chair, will be joining us in a little bit. Um, and Jorge may actually come in um, in, the, in the interim. The, today on the screens here in the room, we will only be able to show one set of slides. So it will either be the transcript or the presentations, if we're actually using presentations or looking at something from the website. If people choose to join the meeting through Adobe Connect, you can actually get the transcript and the presentations or whatever is showing on the slides here. OK. In fact, this is, this is real-time um, real improvements in the IGF. They are, in fact, setting up a separate screen for transcript. So. Um, one other comment. Uh, yesterday there was a Skype chat room running in the background, and I had a couple of comments last night um, to make sure that um, the Skype chat room it does not become um, a sort of significant interface for MAG discussions. Not everybody's in. The MAG discussion should take place in this room um, for full transparency and, and access. So, uh, you know, I, I understand how, how um, useful they are in the background. Um, for questions or to, you know, to follow up on immediate things, but we all need to be really, really careful and really thoughtful not to make that a, a kind of more primary um, uh, communication channel. So please, um, I think probably it would either be most appropriate in the Adobe, uh, connect the Adobe chat room there, or in fact in the, um, in the meeting. Both of those, I believe, are recorded as part of the minutes of the meeting. There's still a few people filtering in, so. So the first um, order of business here is adoption of the agenda, which is up on the, on the screen there. Um, we are in day one of the MAG meeting, day two of our combined meeting. We actually have um, the full day today for the workshop selection process. And if you move to day two of the MAG meeting, day three. Um, in fact, we had left um, much of tomorrow morning um, to finish up any of the workshop selection process as well. Um, an ambitious goal for us would be to try and complete the workshop selection process today. Maybe if there are a few open questions or open items, we could hit those first thing tomorrow morning. But that would allow us more time if we move to day three of the agenda. That would allow us for more time to follow up on some of the working group discussions, dynamic coalition, NRI discussions, some of the other um, more strategic components of our work, as well as, of course, the main and focus sessions, which I expect to be a fairly substantive topic as well. So with that, the agenda has been posted for some weeks, maybe close to a month. Um, are there any further comments? Or do I have your approval to move forward with that agenda? See heads nodding, so I call the agenda approved. So the first item again, one other administrative, we will be using the electronic speaking queue um, again today as well. Um, again, Lewis is available to um, help if people are having any difficulties. Um, it, it really does um, help to keep the, the playing field equal between um, online participants and participants in the room. And in fact, it keeps it really um, uh, level, if you will, even for participants in the room, as I said, as I said yesterday. It's not dependent upon where I might be looking at any point in time or Chengatai, but, but in fact, simply who is, who is first in the queue. Um, so with, with that, um, again, today our work is going to be focused on completing the workshop selection process. And I think it's important that everyone keep in mind that as the MAG, we're responsible for a program that meets the needs of the entire multi-stakeholder community, um, and not simply our own community. We obviously have um, a lot of um, 
support and love and passion for our own issues and our own items, but that is not what we're here to do. We are here to develop a program for, as the MAG, for the global multi-stakeholder community. And I'm sure we will all um, participate in that, in that consensual spirit. So let me cover um, quickly um, the process that I actually sent out um, the other day, I know there were some questions. I tried to respond to them last night. That may not be the um, the easiest to follow. I actually don't think we're doing anything substantially different than what we've done in the last three to four years, um, even if some of my language might have been somewhat confusing <laughs> yesterday. We have always had some number of workshops that were selected um, as a result of the evaluation by the MAG and that was sort of established as a cutoff. We have always gone back and taken a high-level look at that against several diversity characteristics. Those of you that have been in these meetings for some years will probably remember Virat Bhatia, who really was the leader at saying, you know, the workshops that were selected X amount were from developing countries, from this stakeholder group, first-time proposers, et cetera. So it was always against those, um, the topics always against a broad set of criteria that we sort of scanned the ones that were accepted in to see if there was anything that we thought needed to be um, addressed. Are there any imbalances, any significant over-representations or um, under-representations? We do not want to undermine the evaluation process the MAG did, but I think we actually owe that kind of cursory high-level check. That's what was meant in my step two of the, of the process. Um, the, the Secretariat can explain in a moment the cutoff um, at 72 and the proposal that um, we uh, support 80 workshops going forward so that we have that as another baseline. The LEASL had introduced a wild card process on, I don't know, a, a call three or four weeks ago, um, which I understood to be one that said, as a reviewer, if you're going through these workshops and you find something that really looks kind of interesting but you, you really just couldn't rate it highly, um, that you flag that um, because the, the topic was either interesting enough um, or maybe something about the proposers or the panel or the format was interesting enough that you thought it was worthy of further reflection from the MAG and further kind of nurturing or support, if you will. So it was expected that that was a relatively small number. I think what's happened over time possibly with some of this discussion around redressing the, the imbalances was that we kind of conflated those two processes. And I, th I, I, I believe they're separate. Um, you know, if, and I think most of the proposals that have come in through the wild card process, well, actually, I'm going to tell you, I, I think they probably are a mixture. Some were, we found this workshop we were going through that really was worthy of further consideration but didn't make the cut. Others have suggested ones that should be reviewed because of um, a perceived gap in the workshops that are selected. So what I think I would propose would be, as a first order of business, we open the floor for any thoughts on um, balances, imbalances in, after Changatai talks about the 72 and the 80. But um, we talk about any um, perceived balances or imbalances in the 72 that are ranked. We then look at the wild cards and see if the wild cards address any of that. And then if we need um, another level of discussion which would look at um, any other actions we might take to address any of those imbalances, we do that as a separate and third step. Um, what I would like is for the working group on the workshop evaluation, <coughs> looking for Rasha, um, to pick up this part of the process as part of their next phase of work and further define this process so that we have clear definitions. If we're going to use a wild card facility when the MAG reviews the workshops, that we define what that is so that that's more clear and that we define subsequent um, steps for, for um, uh, addressing any imbalances we actually see in the pre-selected workshops. So. Um, let me open the floor first to see if that works for a reasonable process for going forward, if there are any comments or thoughts. And then once we're done this section, I will ask Changatai to give some background with respect to the cutoff of 72. I don't think we need to go through the full 
set of statistic slides from yesterday because they've been posted on the mag list for some time and we did go through them quite thoroughly yesterday. But again, if people really feel that's that's helpful, we can we can put that in. So I think I have G in the queue and then um, Sala, I don't know if you were looking or not, but we're, we are trying to use the speaking, the electronic speaking queue, so you couldn't access it. Okay, well, if you continue to have a problem, maybe C. Maybe Lewis can help. C. Lewis. Lewis can just go now. So, G, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, as a new MAG member, I don't know uh, how do you guys play the game last year, so sometimes I'm slow to respond, and, uh, but uh, I'm really disappointed by the, the, fun, uh, the, the screening uh, result, I mean the 72 shortlist. And the, uh, according to the, the briefing by Jiang Changta yesterday, um, the composition of the, this final, more or less final list is very problematic. For example, Asia, we have 58.4% uh, of global population. Only, yeah. Um, not, I'm, I'm speaking very loud already. I'm sorry. Uh, Now it's okay. Channel zero. Okay, let me let me start again. Or yeah, just to start from the imbalances. Um, Asia has uh, fifty eight. 0.4% of global population, but uh, only 20% 20, 20 of uh, its uh, proposals is from Asia. And Europe has only 16% of global population. And uh, um, in the final, in, in the 72 proposals, more than half is from European countries. And uh, that, that is uh, not, you know, corresponding to the current global strict uh, global uh, geopolitical map. It's far, it's it, it it deviates too far from the reality, and I don't know why this happened. And I think we need to f figure out a way to resolve such kind of the imbalance. Um, I'm not saying that uh, Mac members are not doing the job properly. Um, I I would like to you know have this result. Uh, be respected and uh, take as a good basis for further work. But uh, on this screening result, I, needed, I think we needed to take into account the geographical balance and equity um, into consideration because this is the overarching principle of how UN works. No matter it's multi-stakeholder multi multi model or governmental uh, players only model. And uh, uh, also, uh, in addition to, to population uh, factor, we can also take into the, the size of total e the, the economy of each, each group or uh, internet users of each group, whatever. We, we need to add some, you know, uh, to, uh, to add some, uh, introduce more factors to make this result more more accurately react to the global map. Uh, for example, if we take uh, only gl the population factor into account, we can, you know, um, uh, on multiply the current screening result with the weight of uh, each continent. For example, Asia, you, you give it 60 percent, you g give it 60, uh, the current result, multiply 60 and Europe multiplies 16. That will make things more fair. Otherwise, if, if you say that uh, European countries are sub, sub, submitting more proposals, uh, okay, if that is the, the, the way we work, next year we, we should encourage 
uh, Asian countries to submit 1,000 proposals, and uh, that would be a disaster for for for, for MAG members. We will be uh, we overwhelmed certainly. That's uh, my my uh, initial thinking, and uh, um, at this stage, um, uh, I don't think the current 672 uh, shortlist is the basis we should work on. I think we need to find a way to to get a new shortlist on new method. Thank you. So thank you, Ji. And I, I mean, I, I hear your comments, and I think many people in the room would like a better diversity, both in terms of the workshops that come in and the workshops that are accepted. Um, you mentioned the, the procedures that this room operates by with respect to consensual and bottom-up process from the community, the community that is actually engaged in the IGF. That represents the workshops that were submitted and I think the workshops that were selected. Um, to my understanding, the UN doesn't work through its processes on the basis of population size or GDP or any other global metric. It works on the basis of the topics and the substance that is in front of them, which is, I believe, exactly what we are doing here. Um, if you have some, some specific suggestions you'd like in terms of workshops that the, this room should consider, I'm sure everybody would be very, very happy to consider them. But at, at, at this stage in the process, to think that we're going to throw out the considered work not considerable, considered work of the MAG, and run to a process that looks at something like population statistics, I think is, is just not, not um, appropriate within the, the, the current set of procedures and the context we're operating in here. So let me go to the next queue. I see you're, you're um, back in the queue, but I think in, I had Sala, and then um, there's another five or six folks in the queue as well. So Sala, you have the floor. Hi, good morning, uh, Chair, and good morning, colleagues. Um, I'd just like to offer comments in relation to methodology, just to ensure that we get uh, maximum efficiency uh, while trying to reduce uh, reduce uh, uh, level of uh, biases and to maintain uh, a level of neutrality, noting that whilst we represent or we come from uh, uh, certain stakeholder groups, uh, as MEG members and in executing this particular component of the process, we're actually stewards of, of the entire global uh, process. So in other words, we have to be, we kind of have to be neutral uh, as, as best as possible. So one of the suggestions that I would like to make would be um, that the working group chair, Russia, who's sitting at the back there, I've just flicked an email to Warner before I made this intervention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that the working group chair could, um, if, if they could be allowed, should the rest of the MEG agree, to take, uh, to take the entire MEG for 20 minutes to agree on a set of additional rules for the wildcard process in terms of uh, what components or what, what certain, how do we intend to... Um, if we were going to uh, accept the wildcard process, uh, if there were certain disparities, which they possibly are and which they are, and again, that's my personal opinion, uh, and again, we don't want to take the work off, the excellent work of the selection process, but again, we do want to ensure that we want the best pos possible robust um, uh, outcome in terms of representation, then I think then what I would suggest is that the working group chair, Russia, that she take us through a process where we, through consensus, agree to a set of rules on how we're going to actually uh, make the additional selection. And this shouldn't take longer than 20 minutes. That, uh, and, and once that's done, then perhaps we can uh, begin the process of, uh, say, a selection. So, that it's just, so this suggestion is made in terms of methodology. Thank you, Chair. Okay, I mean, I'll, we should take that um, suggestion into consideration. I think the, the methodology we're doing now is not any different than what we've done in past years. In fact, past years we 
uh, and we sort of did it on the fly with people suggesting, and we came back and had to review 60 proposals or something, which we went through one by one, which is extremely painful. And the MAG was adamant they didn't want to repeat again um, this year. In fact, that was a process we've run the last, the last few years. I think the wildcard process is pretty straightforward. There were nine that were selected, and we can look at those, and then we can see if there are any other imbalances we need to address. Um, that's the process we've been running at a, at a high level. Let me go through. There's another five people. See what those five or six people in the queue, see what those comments are, and then come back and, and see what we do with the, the process. Um, next in the line, I have, so here's, here's what I have. I have Renata, Cheryl, Juan Fernandez, Herman, G, and Suman. So, Renata, you have the floor. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I would just uh, like to confirm that I stand by my list, um, including my wild card priority, being the first one I indicated, the one I would maintain. Uh, initially, my comments were more about um, if these workshops get to be selected, how can we help them? Um, how can they be improved? Um, but uh, they also were selected on uh, the fact that they're from developing countries uh, addressing accessibility issues and, um, and uh, having the possibility for an interactive session. And uh, I would... Um, I do see that there's a need for a more general address in imbalance. For instance, it is unacceptable that an event which is supposed to encourage a bottom-up multi-stakeholder dialogue has 70% of sessions, which are mainly long series of talks by a few presenters, being that the description of most panels and roundtables presented. I think it would be interesting to issue a bulletin to presenters on how to create more interactive sessions. I believe Secretariat would be indicated to coordinate this communication, but MAG members, volunteers who would be interested can help draft it and perhaps articulate with working groups like session formats and outreach. So I'll leave this idea for consideration. And another important imbalance to address, perhaps the most important, is developing countries' participation, also in the backdrop of the diversity criteria imbalance in general, which can be found in some sessions. And this could be also something that this communication by Secretariat could address. Thanks. Thank you, Renata. Uh, Cheryl, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just um, following up on a conversation we had yesterday, which was quite good, I thought, around increasing government participation. Note that we don't have many government proposals in the in the in the top chunk, and so I definitely think that that's an imbalance that we should focus on as we're going through this moving forward. And to a comment that was made earlier regarding, you know, maybe with respect to the proposals that come in, we don't we don't receive enough from certain groups, or it's hard to really understand how it comes out that way. But perhaps an idea moving forward could be to submit sort of uh, almost an invitation to governments to really encourage at least each country to submit a proposal. Uh, so maybe we can sort of boost the numbers on the front end that way. Uh, and I'm sure there are other ideas that folks might have in the room, but I want to make sure that we uh, definitely address that imbalance. Thank you. No, thank you. I, th I think that is an important imbalance. And a discussion I had earlier this morning um, suggested that, you know, it's certainly worthy of more discussion, um, both in terms of this part of the process as well as general um, increasing government engagement. And maybe we can get to that tomorrow, um, tomorrow afternoon, where we'd actually have some time to follow up on the comments from but I um, agree that's important. Um, Juan, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, Leonora, can you put in the screen from the PowerPoint of the statistics, slide seven, please? I always have, I've been telling uh, many times in face-to-face -face meetings last year, last time, and also in the virtual um, meetings, that I think, I believe strongly that we, the MAG, have to exert criteria. Having said that, 
I don't disqualify any quantitative uh, method because that is useful for making so a sort of a ranking in, 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 and sort to of have some uh, guideline. But this is not an exam. We are not having admissions that all people below three or a C in, are not in, in, it's not an exam. This should be a guideline for us to try to find, not that, the seven, the seven. No, the one that has the two pies. Um, maybe I have a, an older version, that one, that one, yes, those two. Because uh, I, as you say, uh, people say um, a picture is more than a thousand words, so that can say that. So I think first that we should not have this charting or the 72 or whatever as a straitjacket. This is only a list in which it's put in the list in terms of the quality perceived, perceived by the MAG members that graded that particular uh, workshop that in, in the end is also a very subjective thing. It's very useful that we have the variance or the standard deviation in order to say that, but as you can see, it's not rocket science, it's not exact science. It's very subjective and it's only a guideline. A guideline for us to do our job. What is our job? We were talking about that yesterday, that there's no interest by private sector, by um, governments. So we have to take that into consideration. And see there, 49% from Western European and other groups. And it's going to be here in Geneva, a very expensive place. In December, in, in many persons that I know from civil society don't even have coats to deal with this climate over here. Uh, we want this to be a club for the rich countries of the world, or we really want people from all the, co all the world, all, all those billion that is not connected. We really believe in that. We want them to participate. So we have to take care of that 49%. We, as the MAC, has to do something about that. OK? And on the other side, from stakeholders, also the same. We want this to be a private club for those. I remember the WISIS process, I remember there was some tension between stakeholders and that this was considered the, 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 the sort of the a concession for civil society, but it has evolved from that. It's not, this is not longer a civil society 100% um, event. Maybe in the beginning it was perceived like that, okay, government has their process and this is going to be the, the space for civil society. No, we try this to be multi-stakeholder with all participation. So that is an imbalance that we have to face. Because otherwise, you know, private sector or the other side, they will not be interested. Even, even private sector is the smaller there. So, and, and we're concerned about that. We can do, we can act on that and we can act trying to solve those unbalances. What I suggest, I suggest, of course, and as Renata said, there's some other criteria develop and underdeveloped, but that be, be, the one on the right it feels because, you know, Africa and Latin America is mainly underdeveloped uh, countries. So, also, we, we as the MAC can help those proposals that maybe are perceived quality is, is Lord to help them to improve the, the, the organization of those, of those uh, workshops. But I think that we should try going down in the list. That is why I propose going down in the list from, from the first and what trying to fill those gaps that are there. For instance, I was looking at the, uh, of the Excel uh, chart. It's only nine proposals from governments and none was accepted. And some of the topics are very interesting. I don't know, maybe the presentation was not good, that's why they didn't receive the grades, but the topics are very interesting. And some are even by developed countries proposal, very interesting here from Eastern Europe, very interesting. I, I, I suggest that we should, we were talking about that yesterday, we should take a look as a MAC to all those nine government proposals and see which of them we can, uh, in, a, in a frank debate, in an open debate, here between all of us, see which one we could recommend 
to move to the top of, of, of that. And the same of some of the, of the other uh, proposals from the rest of, of the uh, countries you know, of, of, of the areas from Africa, civil society for that, and try, you know, the, uh, three, three percent is Eastern European groups, try to find more there and try to balance those, those two. I think that we should keep, in all the work that we're going to have today, we have to keep those two pie charts, either in the screen, either in our minds, but more of all in our hearts, because otherwise the IGF will not be really what it should be. It will be become a private club and, you know, a very expensive this year here in Geneva. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. I'm sure there's a lot of support in the room for um, your kind of meta comments with respect to what we want um, this process to be and certainly that we don't want it to be an exclusive or private club or or club for those with means. Um, I, lots of heads shaking around the room. Um, I, I like your proposal that we look at the nine government proposals that have come in um, because we've had um, significant discussions on the fact that governments are underrepresented. Um, I think there's also something else we need to consider in some of our improvements as we go forward because a lot of governments and a lot of IGOs rely on the open forum process, um, feeling that that's a more appropriate process for them to engage um, in this activity then through the workshop process. And I think that's something we need to evaluate a little bit and understand that. Um, I think that helps with some of the imbalances we see here. But, um, but I, I do actually like, because I, I agree, there were a number of very interesting proposals within those that had come from governments. Um, so we, we'll come back to the process in, in a few minutes, but um, and I would like to um, put forward for the MAG's consideration the fact that we do take those nine government proposals in to account and we look at those when we actually work towards the final selection of workshop proposals. Um, in the queue now I have um, Herman and then I have G and Suman still and then Carlos, Raquel and Elizabeth. So Herman, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Herman Valdez from the Number Resource Organization. Um, I would like to, to say that uh, we should be careful of um, changing the expectation of the methodology that we have discussed and we have implemented in the past. Um, um, I think the, 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 the expectation coming here to, uh, to the Geneva and discuss the different proposals that we have uh, to include in, the, in this year program were based on, on criteria that we already been discussed in the past. So that includes uh, uh, fair distribution among the sectors. Um, the gender, the developing country with versus the belt country, uh, first timers uh, versus returning uh, proposers. So I, I think it's important that we uh, uh, avoid any improvisations of uh, and different criteria, and being those uh, GDP or, 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 or new concepts or new criteria that this come up uh, out of the blue. Um, I think we need to attach to the methodology and, and work on those. Uh, um, there are other SMAC members that are not here, that, uh, that, um, and we have had a lot of opportunities in the teleconference to, uh, to shape the methodology, and at this stage I think we need to attach to what we expect this is going to be. Um, I, I agree with the idea of, in, uh, of the wild cards comps concept, uh, uh, um, uh, using it as to include uh, uh, workshops in the process, but not to remove them. I mean, the idea of having wildcards to remove them from the list, uh, I feel that in the practice can become a, some sort of veto powers of MAC members, which I don't I think, uh, I don't think is, is good for us uh, to have such, uh, such approach to the, to the wildcards in that sense. Um, I, I think also I agree to uh, Juan's comments that we need to avoid to this to become an exclusive uh, club. But uh, sometimes, uh, at least in my personal observation, in the past years, the participation from the region increased depending on where the, the, the IGF meeting is going to be hosted. I mean, this year is going to be Europe. It, it's, 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 more, it's almost uh, naturally that uh, more uh, Europeans will be coming here. And the, the, the dates of this, uh, of this year IGA has been uh, publicized uh, for a long time. So I think it's a reflection as well that maybe no, not other, uh, many other uh, re participants from other regions applied because they knew that it was going to be difficult for them to come uh, to the IGF uh, given the dates and the time of this particular year. 
uh, but uh, maybe it's a reflection of, 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 the, of the reality we are facing in terms of uh, the, the, the dates. Um, but I fully agree that we should work in the void to this to, to become uh, an exclusive club. Um, and, and, and lastly, I like to, um, uh, to, to support um, the, the idea of, uh, in, in order to uh, work on those imbalances, to support the idea of including IPv6 uh, worship that was uh, mentioned uh, yesterday in the list. Uh, we worked very successfully in a best practice forum uh, related to IPv6 and will be uh, we will be sending a very wrong message that this year we don't have any particular single workshop related to that. Uh, and this is becoming quite critical for the stability of the internet to discuss uh, uh, this technology. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Herman. Many good points. And to your very last point, there certainly was a lot of support on the list for uh, moving forward with that merged um, IPv6 proposal. Um, G, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I know that people, uh, most, uh, some of our colleagues uh, wish to stick to the past practice. Uh, as new members, I, um, I haven't participated in, in deciding on the criteria we're using now. But uh, um, I, I, as myself is concerned, I have to stick to my principles. And before we solve the fundamental problems, I'm not ready to discuss any particular proposal or any wild proposal. This is the, not a world uh, before the First World War. I have an impression that the multi-stakeholder model has be become a thin cover for European dominated world. Everybody are created, we all men are created equal. If we, if we don't talk about, when we talk about democracy, human rights, if we don't talk about uh, population, what, what uh, does democracy and human rights mean? Geographical equity and balance is an overarching principle of United Nations. It's the cardinal rule. Whatever models you take, this principle should first of all be respected. But the current screening result deviates too much from this principle. And, uh, that is unacceptable. I think we need to uh, also balance the qualitative factor and also quantitative factor. And uh, you know, to people might say that uh, the number of proposals from Asia Pacific is very low. It in the total more more than 280 proposals, like only 20 percent is from Asia Pacific. That's true. But the problem is that Asian people use a totally different language system from the Western world. To prepare one proposal in Asian countries, the difficulty, the times we consume on it, is three times or four times than that of, of European countries. The translation is very expensive. Not every expert from Asia speak English, but they are very good experts. We all know very well that uh, we, are, we Asian people are doing many innovative things. We are leading the world in, in internet economy, and we deserve a chance to be heard. We come to this IGF meeting. We, we, we come modestly. We are ready to learn. But we also want to share our best practices. We are not coming to be brainwashed by others. So before solving this fundamental this imba imbalance, um, I would like to say that uh, we should not talk about any particular wild card and any, you know, which one should be killed and which one should be salvaged. Thank you. Thank you, Ji. I mean, I, I have a lot of sympathy for your comments. That at the same time, we're working within a process that has some restrictions. And I mean, I think we're, we're all keen to figure out how we can get beyond some of those restrictions and be even more inclusive and even more open and facilitate more proposals from all regions of the world. Um, and I think we need to be quite creative in terms of how we, doing, how we do that moving forward. 
Um, with respect to one of your first comments, I mean, you have been a MAG member this year. This MAG approved the processes we're running with. Um, so, yes, those processes have been largely the same over the last three or four years, but the processes and the criteria we established were established by this MAG, um, of which you're a part of. And I do hope that we can move forward with agreement on how we're going to process our way through this workshop selection process this year and that we find a way to capture your very excellent points about how we can make those improvements going forward. I don't think there's disagreement in the room about how hard it is and how English-centric it is. And that is not a goal. We are not, our goal is not to be English-centric in this, in this process. Um, but we're going to need to be creative with respect to how we figure out um, ways to solve that because there are some very real, very real restrictions that we're living within. Um, I'm going to move next to the um, Suman, who's in the queue. And then we have another three or four folks, and I'll come back to you again, G. Suman, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Russia for the, and the team for the new process evaluation. It makes our life a bit easy and uh, gives us enough time to evaluate the papers. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, one thing I think we couldn't do this time, that uh, marking uh, for merging, like same kind of paper coming up. And last time we suggested a lot of merging suggestions, but this time we couldn't do it. I just look at the list, and I found one special topic, like the fake news, the third selected to topics, and total seven paper submitted on fake news, and four of them are among 80. So do you need the, uh, I think we can merge and reduce similar topic in the agenda so that we can accommodate government papers or some other papers or wildcard thing inside the top 80. That is one observation. Maybe some other uh, similar thing may happen. This came to my eye, so I just pointed out. So if you all can look at the list and uh, of our interest, then we can actually filter it out in a better way. And second point, actually, that discussion is having, looking at this side, actually. I'm from the developing country, so what I can tell that, actually, one of the reasons what Herman mentioned, that uh, uh, this time it's in Geneva, and it's very expensive for many people from there. So there's one of the reasons less number of papers from Asia, uh, because some people, they're told that they want to submit, but they're not sure they'll get funding, so they didn't submit the paper. So, so if we can uh, get some country in Asian region, a lot, lot, lot of many years in South America or in Europe in this side. So if we can move IGF to that side, then we'll see more participant, participation. And secondly, we need to be a little bit passionate because I want to give an example from the technical perspective. Like uh, uh, if I go back in 2005, 6 that time where we started different NOG in South Asia, SANOG and other NOGs event, all this presenters, speakers are from Europe, USA, or Japan, or Australia. But in 2017, I can tell that in ethnic community terror program, 70% are from South Asia or this developing region. So if we encourage people and if we help them to grow, then, then eventually they came up. So we have to be a little bit patient on that as well. So, but definitely we should, we should be focused on that, that we need to bring those people, we need to uh, connect, the next billion we have to connect, how we can do that. Definitely they should be in mind, but we should be a little bit passionate. We should not be impassioned at this moment. Thank you very much. No, thank you, Suman. And um, yes, Herman made one of those points earlier, and Changatai actually pointed out that there really is a significant difference in where the proposals come from, depending on where the, the meeting is located. And part of the way we attempt to, to uh, manage that is by rotating the IGF through regions, um, is to increase participation there. Um, Carlos Fonseca, you have the floor. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just uh, and good morning. Uh, just a few comments from someone who is a newcomer here, so I'm not used to, uh, you know, uh, the way you guys work. But um, uh, to uh, a comment to what was said first by uh, uh, G for our colleague, uh, my colleague G. I I really don't don't see. Um, a, a methodology problem or an imbalance uh, um, when we consider the number of proposals that were presented and the number of proposals uh, that were accepted. So if we go to slide number six, uh, we can see that 46% uh, uh, of proposals came from Western European, et cetera, and then 49 were accepted, 23 from Latin America, 24 accepted. 
20 from Asia, 18 accepted, etc. So th there is a, 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 a correlation, and it's, it's very uh, balanced to, 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 to a way. Um, maybe in, in that respect, the only imbalance would be uh, uh, proposals made by governments, 4% and, and zero accepted. So there is something there, okay? But n I don't personally see a problem in the correlation between the, the, the two pies. What I uh, um, see as maybe a problem, uh, it's, it's a, a problem at the origin, not really there. So it's not a methodolo methodological problem there, it's a problem at the origin. And, and my colleague Juan Fernandez Gonzalez just mentioned that, uh, and a few other colleagues here. Um, maybe the problem is how to stimulate uh, certain regions, certain stakeholders to increase their participation rather than to change the methodology that was applied there. Because if you have 20% of a proposal from Asia and then you have the 18% accepted, I don't see really a, a problem there. So um, then if you go to slide number six, maybe there you can see uh, uh, the origin of the problem. 65% of proposals came from uh, uh, returning proposers. So uh, th there is, I think, uh, the, uh, a problem in, in uh, uh, sort of renewing this club membership to, to borrow an expression that was used before me. Um, um, then the, uh, there is a, s a number of, of issues that could be considered. So, but if, if two thirds of the proposal are made by people who already proposed before, so it, it clearly shows that there is a, a problem in, in renewing you know, this club membership. Maybe one aspect would be to try to stimulate governments, uh, clearly go uh, government actors or Asian actors maybe uh, are, are the ones who participate the least. Uh, if, in, if you consider that, uh, uh, and then, um, at, as was mentioned by by G again, uh, w language is is definitely a problem. So we are working in English here, and I know that uh, UN official languages are not one but six, including Chinese. So, and again, I know this is this poses a very a, a great a, a big logistic problem but, but definitely language is a barrier so if if the UN works in six languages and we here work with one only language and then of course people who uh, don't dominate English will really don't work in English well they will have a, 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 a problem in dealing with that so uh, the, the way I see it I don't think there is a methodological problem the way it, 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 it is done today, but rather and how to renew participation. That's, that's the way I see that. Thank you. Um, th thank you, Carlos. Um, many good points there. And we would love to have the resources to be able to do this in languages and to translate the website and to translate the materials and things as well. Um, hopefully soon. There'll be some better electronic tools to facilitate some of that. But um, next in the queue is Raquel. Raquel, you have the floor. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, so I'm perhaps bringing a um, pragmatic perspective, if you may. Um, uh, I'm uh, tackling some of the, uh, the topics already mentioned here. Um, I think we, we need to take separate discussions. The first one is what we have as a goal here, uh, which is to evaluate the, the workshop proposals and to come out with the agenda for the IHF. Um, and we need to recognize and respect the efforts made by those who submitted the, those proposals and how we can um, ensure that um, we have a strong agenda forward. Um, and um, in, in this effect, I'm, I'm going to mention uh, some of those topics. But then there is this, and it's an important discussion, but we need to be careful not to be, you know, um, in the cycle of where we want to be. And I, I think Juan made a very good point. Uh, we don't want to be this, you know, exclusive club. And uh, at some point, we need to think forward what we can do as improvements. And, and Carlos was mentioning that too. Um, and, and G. So 
but um we need to first stick to the this methodology and stick to this goal that we need to uh, come out from this meeting uh, with this evaluation process. It is important and, and, and the community expects for that. In terms of, um, so first going now for the topics, um, in terms of the geographical imbalance, and this was mentioned, um, it seems to me to be a venue effect. It is, um, you can see most of the proposals coming up from Europe is part of, you know, um, being host here. Uh, the second region is Latin America. It's probably an effect of uh, the last IGFs being held in, in Latin America. And so um, this has, uh, you know, this venue effect and historical um, numbers. Uh, it's not as balanced in terms of one region um, being uh, overcome the other, but it's more what you get from it. Um, and then just flagging, I know we're going to tackle in substance later, uh, but um, the imbalances that I see that are important that we, we tackle, one is the, uh, the topics that should be considered even though they don't make it to the final cutting. Um, and German already mentioned um, IPv6. I think there was a great support, and it's an example of uh, the topics we, we need to consider, or are the workshops by topics that we need to consider. The other one that I want to flag, the other imbalance, is um, reconsider the government proposals. Um, I think there are practical solutions that we can take. There is one that is almost in the, the close to the cutting line. It's very well evaluated, uh, and we, we could start considering from those criteria. Um, and it's also a message that we send. Uh, I mean, governments have other spaces like the open forum, we mentioned that, or they can be speakers. But having governments um, mobilizing to present a proposal and to organizing a workshop, it is um, really embracing the, also them as part of the, the IGF uh, methodology. So I think this is important. And I just want to support um, now on the second part that I was mentioning uh, on where we should be, the importance of language. I know it's uh, resources, but also don't underestimate the community efforts that we could pull out to make it happen. So just to live like that, uh, it's important to open up uh, to receive proposals for other languages to, I know there will be some need for adjustments, especially for the later evaluation, but that's something we can think for the next, um, the next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raquel. Um, Xi, you're next in the queue. So as you can get ready, we'll then go to the um, speaking queue, which is Elizabeth, Juan, et cetera. Xi, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Let me uh, come back uh, briefly on the UN practice on how do we address the geographical balance issue. Uh, most of the time, we divide countries into East Group, West Group, NAM, and uh, plus one country group, which is China. This is the established pr practice in, in conference on disarmament. And uh, in terms of uh, you talking about population, not uh, a, a, a uh, one of the factors we, we consider, but uh, the G20, G7, all these important international organizations are based on economic size plus uh, population size. So um, maybe we can come up, come up with a new uh, weight factor, um, taking into consideration these, uh, uh, these things, and uh, to multiply the, the, the that new factor with, with the, the screening results we already have there. That may, come up, may help us to come up with a more fair uh, final risk. And um, uh, we can also take into account the number of countries in particular, each particular region. For example, Africa have more than 50 countries. They deserve like more than around 20% of the chances to present themselves in the, in the annual meeting. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ji. Um, Chengatai just mentioned that the, the groupings we're using are the UN groupings that supported the WISIS process, um, which of course is what actually established the IGF. Um, and that is the, the protocol we followed since the very first IGF, um, which is not to say that we can't change those going forward, but I think changing them in you know, what I would term as kind of mid-flight here in our process is, um, is, is uh, fraught with unknown um, additional complexities. Uh, the next in the queue, I said, was Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I think one of the things, in listening to the, the commentary and the, um, and the discussion this morning, one of the things I, I want to move us away from is over um, overvaluing the assumption that is behind um, the categorization of the regional um, influence based on the proposer. And to help us consider that, I, I, I want us to use an example. And one of the examples is um, a proposal put in uh, by a colleague of mine. So she comes from uh, a country in Europe, but she's representing an organization that has a headquarters in Europe, but that is an international organization. So that's my first point, is that the representation of the country by which you are in when you present this is not uh, necessarily a determination of what your, your perspective and angle is coming from. But even more relevant, I think, to the conversation we're having now is that the proposal has a, a set of speakers. There are five speakers. And there's one from Korea. There's one from India. There are two from Africa. Um, and there's one uh, person from WIOG. And so I, I want to remember that we went through an evaluation process, and the reason that this particular um, uh, item came up quite high is because there was a lot of care and attention to diversity of voice, all the criteria that we set out. And so if we now, after ranking based on that criteria, then look at the statistics, which are really helpful for certain you know, just one-shot glances and impressions. But if we overemphasize what we think is in these statistics and forget that we actually went through a much more detailed analysis to find diversity, uh, I think that's, that's, that's a, a false assumption, and I think it leads us down the wrong path. And I want to reassure um, G, for example, that in being the proposer, you construct something, you facilitate and do the, do the work to organize something. But on the day, those speakers, the people that they're interacting with, they create the substance and the voices are heard because those people are participating and speaking. It's not the proposer who's standing there speaking. So I, I think we should take heart that, that we actually have done a good job in ranking diversity and considering diversity and that that criteria, I think we've been um, stronger and harsher on on what we demand from that, and that it's it's well articulated. So I, I would hate to see us second guess that because the statistics look a certain way. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, there was mention of the roundtable and the panel format, and I think we've also heard that given the spaces that we'll be in, that could you know, not having some sort of format like that may be difficult. We had a breakout um, group in, in a workshop last time, and, you know, the rooms sometimes make that more, more difficult. Um, so I would support the notion that um, a roundtable or a panel, the question of how interactive that session will be is really up to skilled and attentive moderating. And um, you know, we saw it in a workshop yesterday. If you actually incorporate um, interaction into the program, into the activity, and you, and you, even if we do need to help train moderators to do that and to be attentive to that, you can have an incredibly useful um, interaction and session, even though you have a, a table of, of, of speakers involved. And then I have one question for the group, which is around the new formats process. Last year, that sort of came in sort of mid midstream, and so we decided to pull out um, uh, some items that could, topics that could fit into the new um, formats process. I don't have a clear understanding of how 
where you, how that's fitting into our exercise today, and I wondered if the Secretariat and perhaps Miguel could help us um, walk through that and understand how that fits in with what, what we're going to do today. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, and, and good comments with respect to relying too, too much on this high-level snapshot, because one of our key criteria was diversity of the panels. And if any panel had had five people from the same region or five from the same stakeholder group, or it would have been rated extremely low, um, and which, again, I think is a rationale for staying with the current methodology and the procedure, because those criteria were looked at very thoughtfully and very carefully, were agreed by the MAG and um, I think does give us the appropriate set of diversity. I have about another nine people in the queue to speak. I'd like to close it off at that and then figure out how we move forward to the next step. So um, just to be clear, Rasha is the last person in the queue. Um, Juan Fernandez, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and I ap apologize for taking the floor again. But I want to clarify, I'm going to be very brief. I want to clarify some of the things that I said before. I'm going to be very brief because, fortunately, the, uh, the previous speaker already argued the thing that I want to say, that that's the good thing to have been in the company of so smart people here around, so the good ideas already are on the table. You don't have to say it again. First, about the methodology, as Carlos said very Clearly, the methodology is not broken. It was working. It worked because it's statistically sound. It, it, it has an input and it has an output. But as, well, I also want to mention, but also it's not perfect because there's some details that you mentioned one, but Elizabeth mentioned some other details that you have to take into consideration that maybe it should, so that, that makes that we, as a MAG, has to complement the methodology. Otherwise, we could all be remote. You know, we have a number and that's it. We need to put our minds and think about that. I think we have to look to, the, to all the workshops. But having, going back to the methodology, the methodologies work because it has an input, it has an output. But unfortunately, the output that we got is not really what we want. So the question is, what we're going to do about it? We can change the input in order to get a better output, as Carlos said. But I think that is something that we have to work in the multi-year thing. It's perspective, but it's not for now. So what are we going to do now? I think that, unfortunately, we have to tweak the output with using this criteria that Elizabeth said, using throughout collective thinking. We have to do this today. Maybe we don't have to go back because we have this methodology. We already have a ranking. We can go by that, not, not, maybe not to the whole list. But I remember that before we had this methodology. I, I don't know who, uh, who are third year um, when we did with Janice in, in it, I think it was in, in Paris, in, in the, the meeting that we had in UNESCO. We went almost all one by one, all the, the workshop proposals, and we have qualitative criteria. Before. It was exhausting, but I really was more satisfied with that uh, procedure than with the purely quantitative. I think the quantitative can streamline the qualitative, but it will never substitute qualitative things. So going back here, either I I'm, I'm agree that the, the, the real solution is in the input to the process. But that's a multi-year thing. That's the thing. And also, I, I, I want to also react to what Herman said about the, the, the regional. Of course, if you're making one in the region, the on-site participation from that region is higher. We had that in Guadalajara last year from Latin America. There was a lot on site. But that should not be for the, for the workshop that comes from all over the world. And even here we have, he's in Europe, but Eastern Europe only has 3%. And Eastern Europe is here. And Africa is closer to, to, to Europe than to America. And Asia, Asia is even closer to Europe than to America. So I think that we have to handle that with some other perspective. I think in terms of the workshop, we need to be more global, because those are the ideas that are being interchanged. Maybe sometimes you have a workshop, and maybe the, the presenter cannot come. Somebody will take it, but you have the representation there. So I think that 
of course, the solution is to work in the input. That's a perspective work for multi years, but now we have a problem, and I think that we should m do it. We should not keep the methodology as, as cast in stone. I think we have to accept criteria. I'm, I'm saying that over and over again. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. I mean, I don't think the, the methodology is cast in stone. I think it is trying to find the right mixture between the quantitative and the qualitative um, reviews. Um, so I have Arnold, Jack, Pablo, Israel, Liesel, Cheryl, Rasha, and G. I will add you to the queue, um, but I really would like to close it and then see if we can, can agree a way forward after that. So Arnold, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, you can hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Arnold van Rijn is my name. Um, uh, from the Dutch government, MAC member. Um, and good morning to you all. Uh, I would um, give you a positive note on the selection uh, process. I was impressed, really impressed, by the huge amount of high quality proposals which came forward and which ended up with a really high score. Um, lots of those proposals were above the, the threshold of uh, uh, 3%. Um, but a selection process has, is not perfect. It can be improved. And we should work on that in the, in the near future. Uh, because I noted that, and it was mentioned by other colleagues here in the room, that governments uh, didn't make the cut. Um, I looked at um, the online um, format uh, where we could fill in our, our, our comments, and I was really uh, uh, pleased that we can use this, this new online tool for our grading, and we should keep that in the future. Um, but also, looking at this online tool, we could improve it. I noted also that there were uh, less comments than I expected from our colleagues um, because it was, it was mentioned that uh, when you end up with a score below uh, 3%, then you have to write down why uh, uh, you thought so. Um, but I did it the other way around. I mean, as even if it was build above the threshold of 3%, I, I wrote down my comments. And I think uh, we should in the future uh, use that, 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 that uh, format to uh, write down your uh, comments, whether these are positive or critical. And so you, there's a better understanding than why somebody came up with a, uh, a certain grade. Um, then um, I also noticed that um, from our community, the national IGF uh, community, uh, we had sent in uh, four proposals and they didn't make the cut either. So they're quite disappointed and um, I think uh, we can use some of our guiding principles when setting up proposals uh, uh, for perhaps the, in the near future. And that is when they are going to table a proposal, uh, different stakeholders independently, uh, they have to stick to some principles. I'll name them, uh, a couple of them. Uh, that is, first, uh, the proposal has to feed, at least the outcome of the, such discussions, has to feed into the regional and global IGFs. Second, it has to build on the conclusions of previous IGF. Third, topics must be emerging challenging issues. Fourth, it must attract new participants to the IGF. And lastly, debates forward must be innovative. So these are guiding principles uh, which upon uh, uh, our, our community are forming a uh, proposal and sending it in. So um, uh, when we are discussing concrete proposals, I will come back to the, uh, to the issues and uh, hopefully uh, we have another look at it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Arnold. It'll be interesting to see the, uh, the proposal. Uh, Jacques, you have the floor. Oops, um, thanks, Chair. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I think at the risk of sort of repeating some of the points which are uh, already made, made, I just wanted to just maybe reiterate four. Um, the first one is a question around the wildcards um, process. Um, if I'm not hearing wrongly, I'm, I'm thinking that there is still a possibility of introducing other workshops to be considered, to bear, taking into consideration possibly um, different kinds of um, balances that needs to happen. Am I right? Uh, that the wildcards is not those are not the only workshops that we're going to consider, that there's possibility to think of other ones, for example, government. I really like La uh, Raquel's um, proposal as well to look at the government 
um, workshop submissions that has that is a little bit up the ranking. That sort of shortcuts some of this. So that's that's just a clarification. Um, and the other imbalance is also that that I'm seeing is also from the African region as well as um, Eastern European, as mentioned by Juan, especially in terms of venue bias. Um, the second point is that I think we just need to be careful to not throw away the baby with the bathwater. Um, uh, in that um, it's a good thing that civil society is very invested in this process. Um, and the question is not that this in itself is a problem, but how do we increase investment by other stakeholder groups? So to be quite careful, I think, in terms of thinking through that. The second is also in terms of the private club thing. Um, I think it's really also quite important to recognize the kind of sustained investment and commitment of different groups in this process. Um, and at the same time, to be able to make sure that this is balanced against and openness, that there is um, care and consideration to make sure that this space remains open whilst not really penalizing people for being sustain for sustaining their commitment to the process. Um, and um, uh, so some of the things that we are doing in order to ensure this kind of openness are the criteria um, which has been developed and thought through very carefully, as Carlos mentioned very, very much early in this whole conversation around privileging first timers, around making sure that there's diversity in stakeholder groups, in regional participation, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things have been really, really thought through and developed and fine-tuned as well throughout the different years and not, you know, sort of like as we are identifying issues, not to forget that this is an existing and ongoing work um, to try and make this much more improved each um, year by year. Um, the third point, I guess, um, the third point I wanted to make is that I think Elizabeth makes a really, really good point around diversity within the sessions themselves. Um, it's going to be very tricky to do, and I, I already really greatly appreciate the, the work that the Secretariat has done in terms of pulling out the statistics to show, like, you know, diversity so that we can have a bit of a bird's eye view. But if it's possible um, to pull out statistics even within the workshop submissions themselves to see actually stakeholder groups. So you mentioned yesterday, I think, in that just because a proposal is not um, submitted by government doesn't mean that there's no government representation. They could be speaking in other proposals that are submitted by other people. So that also gives a maybe much more nuanced and a, a better sense of reflection of diversity um, in terms of countries, regions, stakeholder groups and so forth. Um, if that's possible, that'd be fantastic. But I know it's, it's probably very tricky. Also has to do with timing in terms of how many speakers can you actually already confirm in the submission process stage as opposed to the actual um, workshop when it's being held. But yeah, that would be really um, great to have. And just to reiterate that we have to make a distinction between the approval, the selection process and the submission process, or as Juan puts it, the input and the output um, and to be quite clear in terms of what we're doing here, um, the concern is not so much that there are few selected workshops, for example, from the Asia-Pacific region, but why are there so few submissions? Um, and how do we respond to this also as the MAG? Um, and we had a serious discussion yesterday about how to engage diverse stakeholder groups from governments, from private sector. A similarly um, serious conversation that needs to be had in terms of how do we engage different regions um, to be able to increase their participation. Um, and maybe national and regional IGFs is one way to do this, also Internet Governance School, and maybe a series of webinars can be organized next year in advance early enough to help um, in proposal writing, because it might not be very, you know, it might not be evident, um, and this could be something that we could do to support some of this in different languages, in different regions, and this will require some kind of take-up from um, either from MAG or from other, you know, interested um, parties. And um, this is a bottom-up approach. It needs to really reflect the interest and investment of the community. Um, so it sort of needs to go from the periphery to the centre, supported from the centre to the periphery in some ways, and to think through like what are the different roles in which we play in relation to this. Um, and it is long-term work, as Juan mentioned earlier. So maybe this is something that could also be considered as some sort of intersessional activity, maybe a working group, maybe a BPF of some sort. And lastly, um, as far as I'm aware of, UN works on the principle of one country, one vote, regardless of population. And I think this is also quite an important principle to check against geopolitical power. So I'll just end on that note. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jack. Um, really appreciate your comments with respect to um, kind of reminding us of some of the things we have tried to do to fix the origin or the input problem. Um, and clearly we need to do more. And I also like some of your suggestions with respect to how we might um, begin addressing that as well. The next in the queue is Pablo Bella. Thank you, Pablo. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, this is my first time in, 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 in the MAG. I'm from private sector from Latin America. Uh, I totally agree with Juan that the, there is a no problem in the methodology about the, the process of, of select the, the workshop. But it's pretty clear from my point of view that the outcome is not good for a multi-stakeholder global forum. Uh, for that, taking into consideration, consideration what Elizabeth said, I think that the best way that we can uh, consider to, to solve this issue is to introduce a cap. Uh, for example, uh, could be uh, no more than 35 a workshop per a stakeholder and no more than 25 uh, workshop per region groups. I totally agree that the problem is in the input size, uh, but uh, at the same time, I think, I think that we, uh, we have to deal with this issue right now because it's very important to have a, a real multi-stakeholder forum in December. So I, this is my proposal to introduce a cap. Um, thank you, Pablo. Um, it would be interesting, I don't know if there's resources in the Secretariat to just do that quickly right now with the 72 that are in. Even having said that, I have a caveat, which is with respect to Elizabeth's, because if the proposal came from one country, but 80% of the participants are are from without that that country. Um, but anyway, let's just just noodle on that a little bit more, and maybe it's something we do at the end to um, to address that. The uh, Israel, Israel Rosa, you have the floor. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Is from developing countries that are fine now uh, that we should strengthen our capacity building initiatives, but also in the local and regional communities. A good effort in the LAC region is the LAC space intended to promote uh, not only during the IEF meeting, but also during the intersessional uh, period to promote, uh, for example, the participation of the regional community through. Thank you, Israel. Um, it, it was a little um, kind of garbled, I guess, is probably the best. I think the um, scribes did a, did a great job at capturing what was there. Um, if you're in the Adobe Connect, you could perhaps just look at the, um, the scribe kind and see if, there's, if you feel it accurately reflected what you said or not. Um, and if not, then send it in, in in writing. I said I think they actually did quite a good job. Um, that team, but thank you. Liesl, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everybody. Um, uh, I guess I also have three points. I'll dispatch the first two quickly. Uh, first, on the workshop evaluation process, I, I, I will submit some comments to the group, but mostly I thought that um, the, uh, the evaluations went really well, and I think the result is probably not that much different than when, when we had 200 some each to review. So uh, it's generally positive. I think that um, the proposal form can still be improved because I think that input is not quite there for us when we're evaluating. Um, I just want, the second point is I just want to make a point about the government presence. I really um, appreciated. Elizabeth's comments about the diversity within each of the proposal and what it brought, it reminded me 
um, is that last year at IGF in Guadalajara, there were 80 governments represented um, by the participants, many of whom spoke. I don't know what the sub-number of that would be. And while that's probably not adequate, it's at least a good number to think about when we're talking about the diversity aspect here. Um, and so third, I guess I have a request. Um, if we are going to look at the government proposals, as you've, as you've noted, Chair, um, then would it be possible for the Secretariat to send us a subchart of those proposals and links to the, um, a subchart of the list and links to the proposals or something? Because I'm having trouble manipulating the chart to try to get to those that we've received to get to those proposals so that we can actually roll up our sleeves and look at them. And I would also say that we really do need to take into consideration um, the, as you've mentioned, that governments often put it proposals in for open forums, and that process hasn't closed yet. So it might be that we need to get some information from the Secretariat about those that have been received or those that typically submit. I don't know what, how that will inform that process, but um, if we can get that subchart so we can start looking at that. Um, perhaps that's also true for whatever the cutoff period is for the, um, I'm almost hesitating to use my term of wild card at this point, um, or the new submissions for workshops that need to be considered for additional elements of balance. If we have a cutoff and perhaps can get a chart of those, that would be helpful for us to actually review them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Liesl. Let me see if Chengadai has a response to that or if he needs a few minutes to reflect. I mean, let me just uh, repeat back to you what you want. You want a um, Excel sheet with the nine government proposals and the links to that? Yes, exactly. That would be helpful for me to, if we're going to review them. And, yeah, sure. That and, shouldn't be a And I guess I would have an additional question as to, what do you expect of us as we review them? Our top choice for submission from each of us, or how are we going to review I'll them? But yes, answer your question. Yes, I'll answer that first, the, yeah. first question. Yes. The second question I'll leave to the <laughs> yes. chair. Thank um, you. But yes, that's exactly right, so that we can take a look at them. I just can't do it, toggle back and forth through everything to, to find them quickly. Thank you. And I'll answer the second question once we take the remaining speakers in the, in the queue. Next, we have Cheryl Miller. Thank you, Chair. Um, actually, Jack commented on one of the things I wanted to raise just with respect to the, the club comment that was made. I, I do think it's important uh, to note that there have been some longtime supporters, both individual and organizations in the room, that have really actually made some great strides in, in broadening our community. Um, I would note that Brazil was really instrumental in launching the IGF youth program, and that's really been growing, and I think that that's a, a very positive step. And we certainly can all work together to create some new avenues and new pathways, um, but we should certainly not forget that. Uh, another item, remote participation, that's something that we should keep working on to really improve and, and, and make it better for you know those times that people can't physically be in the room. Um, it is the internet after all, so certainly important as well. And then, um, Travel support, another key key item moving forward if we really do want to reach out to certain populations that maybe don't have the same resources. And I think it's really up to all of us in this room to think about how we're going to approach fundraising and how we're all going to sort of be responsible for ensuring the financial health of the IGF moving forward. Um, I really appreciated uh, Elizabeth's comment on speaker diversity. Um, that's very important. I certainly am not a proposer myself, but am happy to speak on certain things. So I think you know there, there are different roles of participation sort of within. And I, I was pleased to see that of the proposals, you know, they were quite balanced in terms of gender diversity, um, regional, et cetera. So I think everyone really did do a pretty good job on that. And then um, there was a comment made with respect to uh, return proposers. I think that's great. We want people to come back. We don't want people to propose one year or show up one year and, and not return. I, I think that's what we want. We're looking at this as kind of longer term, especially now that we have our new mandate. So to not forget about that. 
And um, Juan's comment is certainly on point uh, on thinking about how we um, approach the inputs and improve the inputs. I think we just have to start thinking a little bit more strategically about how we market things and how we are able to really engage those new voices that we discussed yesterday as well in terms of growing the community even broader. So thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, Rasha, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for your comments. Um, just a couple of quick points. Um, I think the point was made uh, yesterday and maybe reiterated that that um, I, I think it would be helpful if I'm not sure if, it, if it's doable for this time, but if we can have a listing of um, of stakeholders by speakers rather than by proposers, uh, because if I'm if I'm proposing a workshop and I have let's say five speakers from five different stakeholders, I can play around with who do, whose name do I put as a proposer if I know that this name has a better chance of being accepted on grounds of diversity. So if there's a first time proposer, uh, you know, I'll put their name as proposer even if they're not actually the ones who worked on the, on the proposal. <laughs> you know, I'll just put whichever name that, that gets me through. Uh, and and I'm, I mean, I'm not. I'm sure this is not going to happen next year. But you know, if if word gets out that we're picking up the government proposers and 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 uh, sort of pushing them through the queue, that's you know that would be the the magic word. Just put put the person's name as a proposer who who comes from the government sector. But I do think it would be interesting to see overall from from the speakers list how many speakers do we have, particularly if confirmed speakers from from each stakeholder group that might. That might give us a better picture of the of the overall diversity of, of speakers than that we have than than we do now. Um, my my second point is is on the um, Arab region, <laughs> and I know it's not a region per se, based on the based on the criteria that we have. Uh, but I was also wondering if maybe again I'm not sure if it's doable for this time, but maybe for for um, future rounds. If, even if not officially, can we have a count of what comes out of the Arab region just for for people who come from that part of the world to know how little output basically they have out there? Because I, I went through the proposals uh, list and I could only fa find three workshops from the MENA region. None of them were, were actually accepted. Um, and I just want to make the point very strongly that I that I would advocate for diversity of regions but I would not um, advocate for the the necessity of every single country being on the list as a proposal because if we go by that uh, logic that automatically gives us like 210 workshops that have to be accepted uh, if a minimum of one one workshop per country um, so I was just, I, these are just, you know, uh, ideas off the top of my head, but I was wondering if we can have uh, these statistics uh, available for this round, or if not, then for next year. Thank you. Chengatai, is it possible to get those sorts of statistics, or Eleonora? Um, it's, um, I mean, as Russia has said, it's, it's not a defined region. I would have to go through it. Uh, for the panelists, uh, yes, we did mention, um, I think I mentioned, was it yesterday or on our virtual call that, yes, that is one thing that we saw after we did the evaluations that it would be very useful to have that and we hadn't thought of that. So for this week, we can't do it, um, but I mean, we can do it later on, but I don't think it will help. But for next time round, yes, we are definitely going to be able to do that. I, I, I would just uh, warn against the against taking it as a fact that governments are underrepresented because they, I mean, they are on panels. They're just not listed as proposers. I, do, I don't think, I mean, does it make a difference if a person is listed as a proposer or as a speaker? Does it make a difference in terms of the role that they take on during the panel? I, uh, uh, it can. Politi politically, but. <laughs> it can be argued <laughs> that um, 
if a person as a panelist, they're supporting that workshop, the, the workshop doesn't come from that stakeholder group. So there is some you know, perspective there. It's, I mean, but you can look at it in which way, that's the thing. Thank you, Changatai. Um, G, you have the floor, and then Carlos, and then we'll. Thank you, Chair. I would like to reiterate that uh, I'm not ready to go into discussion of particular specific proposals before we solve the the methodological issue. Of course, we I understand it would be difficult to come up with a uh, uh, a grading system everybody can agree to. Um, we can work on that in the future, but uh, um, the current problem, the this extreme imbalance between different regions should be solved this year. We, it, we should not postpone it un, until next year. So um, to make things simpler, I would like to propose that uh, can we set a cap uh, for each region, for the number of proposals from each region. For example, Asia can have uh, up to 30. Europe can Eastern and Western Europe can up to 20, something like that. Thank you. Thank you, G. We'll come to that in, uh, in a moment. Let me just set the last speaker in. Carlos, you have the floor. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry to, to take the floor again. Just very quickly, um, to agree what was said by many colleagues, and especially Juan, I think engaging new actors or new stakeholders is, is definitely a, a long-term issue. Uh, I'm, I don't think it's something we, we can deal with uh, just now, and you know, it's just a strategic uh, problem. We have to think about that and, and to uh, um, and see what we can do in the long term. But I, I, I'm also uh, 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 was struck by um, the problem with the diversity of uh, um, um, topics that uh, were presented. The, uh, if we consider the uh, thematic tags, the, the first tags used, uh, I, I, I strikes me at, at, at the, 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 uh, how little or the, 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 the little the number of, of, of topics that were covered by um, because uh, you can see about around 16 but then if you uh, uh, consider one by one you have cyber security cyber norms and cyber crime and this is basically uh, <laughs> A similar topic, freedom of expression and freedom of expression online, internet governance in multi stakeholder corporations related, human rights and human rights online is, is related. So uh, um, maybe this is something we could consider in the shorter terms, uh, ways to uh, uh, stimulate uh, a, a diversity in, uh, in topics. Uh, uh, um, of, of proposals, uh, let's say by, by establishing some sort of quota or some sort of uh, uh, mechanisms to stimulate the, the different topics to be to be presented. So maybe this is something we can deal with in the shorter term. Um, maybe it's easier to establish a quota or the f um, to uh, diversify the, uh, the, the topics. Uh, maybe it's easier then to establish a quota by region. I think so. It's it's just uh, just an idea. Thanks. Well, thank thank you, Carlos. Um, I think there's lots of work we could do to make the tags perhaps more useful. I think at some level we thought allowing people the freedom to put their own tags in was being useful, but I think as you say, it it makes it more difficult to see if there's a you know, an aggregation of topics. I think we should think about that a little bit more, and maybe that's something the working group on working shop, workshop evaluations could take on as well. Um, let me come just quickly to the, I think, current question of caps and quotas. And I know a lot of people. Actually, let me just, Michael, do you have a, an input? I mean, I'd, I'd like to give you the floor because um, you haven't taken the floor to date. Um, in, in you know, the interest of being inclusive here and really supporting um, participation. So let me give you the floor and then I'll, I'll come back. 
Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, for the record, I'm Michael Elisheba from Zambia Under Government Stakeholder Group. Uh, a lot of issues have been raised today, looking at all interventions and comments from all stakeholder groups. However, it points out it 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 all it all gets back to one thing: had we part, had we all participated in the virtual meetings, most of these issues could have been resolved. But during virtual meetings, the presence is so low. As a result, issues are not discussed in a manner that they're supposed to. If you have maybe, instead of being 55 of us in attendance, you end up only finding 21. Of course, we we'll discuss issues that we only, we only agree according to the agenda that is brought on the table. However, in a face-to-face -face meeting like this one, other people may not even have had a chance of being part of a virtual meeting. So some issues which they are encountering right now are new to them. And in this way, they are taking us backwards. I think just as a way forward from this meeting, let us take virtual meetings very seriously. We'll do a less talk when we meet in face-to-face -face meetings because most of the contentious issues could have been handled way back in meetings and on mailing lists. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Michael. I, I do think that's a very good point. The virtual meetings carry the same weight as the physical meetings as well. And we actually do take lengths to move them around the 24-hour uh, clock, uh, you know, at great pain to someone, um, only in the interest of really being fair, um, so that everybody actually shares in kind of the comfortable time zones and the uncomfortable time zones for the meetings. But I, I think that was a good point. I, I think to your other point, you know, we are well advanced in the process. Um, we're 12 years in with a lot of learnings behind us. Um, I think everybody's in agreement that there is a lot more work to be done on the input side of the process. We've had, I think, lots of activities over the years to do that. We still need more. We need more improvements in, in that end. But what's in front of us right now, and I think we also need to keep in mind the community that we're addressing, is we established a process, we established a time frame, we established criteria. Um, we need to complete the process according to those established criteria. To change the criteria at this point in time by any significant measure, I think will raise more questions um, with the community, um, more discomfort um, with the process we're using. Um, there's been a, a request for kind of caps or quotas, which I, you know, if it's which I, I will put to the room to see if there's support or not, because historically that's not been <laughs> um, really well supported, I think, in this room where we're meant to take decisions by consensus. Um, the word was used, cap. Cap means not to exceed, not a goal of. Um, so I want to make sure that if we're going to have a discussion on whether or not we would support caps by some level of the diversity criteria we've put forward, that we use the definition of cap to be not to exceed not that it is a goal. But let me open it um, first just quickly for, um, is there support for trying to, as a, as a method of addressing some of the imbalances through what we've all said as a, and, and Elizabeth said it very clearly, you know, a, a, a somewhat um, too high a level view of the diversity of the workshops by simply identifying the proposer. Again, you could have a proposer from country X, but that proposer might or might not be on the panel, and the panel might have, you know, full diversity. Um, with that said, um, is there support in the room for trying to establish some sort of um, cap across, I guess what I've been hearing is sort of a regional a metric? So I see lots of, and again, this is not fair to those that are online, but let me just, coming from, I see lots of heads in the room, um, signaling no. Um, I'm not quite sure how to do that um, with those folks that are participating online, but maybe there's an opportunity to put something in the queue. And then I have Juan Fernandez who was asked for the floor. So Juan, you have the floor. I'm sorry, Chair, because I think that these questions cannot be so, uh, so black and white. Because as Elizabeth said, uh, we really have to do we, we have to get the diversity. Here, the, the, main, the, the really black and white question is, are we going to, to keep the imbalance results, or are we going to do something about it? That's the real black, black and white. I'm supposing that we're going to do something about it. And for that, 
we have to, in a way, to tweak the result, the output, not the input, the output. And as Elizabeth very clearly said, some of the problems of the diversity, maybe it's part of the tag that we have, the high level view, but we have to get into detail and see if it's really diverse. And then really we need to put some sort, not caps or quota, call it how you do, but we have to put some something in from the 72 and maybe take out some from the lower 72. I know we have a stock of eight from the 72 to 80. We also have the open forums, that the open forums could be for intergovernmental and that, that gives us more room, but we have to do it. And in that tail part of the one that we put in and out, we have to look it to detail, as Elizabeth said, not only the, this and to see that, but we have to do that. Otherwise, simply, we can go early and say, okay, keep that number from the list and that's it. So, so I don't think anybody's saying that's it or that we aren't going to address the imbalances. I think it's how can we best address the imbalances given the information we, we have, in, have in front of us. Um, or quotas or whatever. Carlos, you have the floor. Uh, yeah, j just a thought. Uh, maybe uh, not, I don't think the, that regional quotas would work. I, I don't see that, and or, or at least not in the short term. Maybe <laughs> some kind of criterion or stimulus to uh, uh, the different perspectives or different uh, the topics. Um, maybe through that we could uh, deal a little bit with, with uh, regional imbalances, not not that we will establish a quota for Asia, etc., etc., but uh, somehow to create a stimulus in, in the way the methodology is done to uh, 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 stimulate a, a different perspective of something, and then maybe this will work uh, in a way that would sort of uh, stimulate people from other regions to present. Uh, n not because they are from the region, but because they are presenting something that reflects this, the way they see it, uh, maybe the same topic that, you know, so maybe through that, instead of establishing a quota for, okay, that's 20% uh, from Asia, but maybe an extra point if you present a new topic of a new perspective or something like that, you know, not through the region, but through the perspective or through the new, a new topic, you know, just, just a thought. So I think we're at the qualitative part of the process, not the quantitative. The quantitative's been done, and some of the solutions I hear, I think, try to get us to readdress some of the quantitative components, and I don't think we have that ability. I mean, I think we just don't have the information that is sortable in that way, and I don't think we have the time to actually digest it. So I think we're, we're, we're solidly in the qualitative piece. What I've actually heard in terms of some of the imbalances we'd want to address um, would be certainly to look at the government proposals, the nine, that list is being prepared, um, the IPv6 proposals, and there was great support on the MAG list for, um, for that. Um, we've heard about um, the need to maybe take a harder look at Eastern European and African countries, or maybe even developing countries in total, MENA. Yes, the, and so the other regions um, that aren't well represented, and pull that forward. Um, you know, one thing we could do, I, I think that's probably still a relatively small list. I mean, I'm kind of guessing maybe it's 40 workshops or something. Um, I think we can go through. I think we should judge them on their merit, maybe look at the, <laughs> Juan's rolling up his sleeves, time to get to work. Um, look at them on their merit against, but against the criteria that we established, because it's it's not fair to the 260 people that submitted proposals if we start putting different criteria into that acceptance. I think we need to judge those against that criteria and identify specific actions that need to be taken to bring those proposals up to meet those criteria. Um, I think that's probably the closest we can get to, you know, adjusting or, or adjusting the high-level view of the imbalances um, here in the room. So, um, let me, I had um, Sala, Aida, and then Christina, and Sagoon, and Sagoon. So let me go through the list of four and then see where we are. Sala, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. 
Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say I like how you synthesize the criteria. When I first made the comment initially when you opened the, the, the floor, that was what I was trying to get at, for us to zero in to nail down the criteria so that it's just easier to select. Uh, on your comment in terms of quantitative and qualitative, and you note, you mentioned that uh, your reading of the room was that it was qualitative. I would beg to differ uh, that it, it is both quantitative and qualitative, um, but we have to be careful. For example, I can only speak from what I graded. There were instances, I won't mention what I graded, but there were instances where I graded duplicate uh, workshop proposals by completely uh, different proponents, but on, practic on almost virtually the same uh, thematic area. Uh, but I, I, I graded them as if I hadn't seen the other one. I wanted to be fair to them. Uh, and having said that, uh, chances are, uh, chances are just based on what I've graded, that there's, in terms of the data that was harvested or whatever that was uh, aggregated, uh, chances are that we have uh, instances where there's certain thematic areas or tag sets which, um, actually, which are duplicates. I think one such area from memory would be the uh, one related to internet takedowns. Uh, just throwing it out there on internet takedowns. So they were like about four or something. Uh, and having said that, Having said that, at some point, it, and this is where the qualitative part comes in, we, the MAG has to figure out how to merge that because, you know, you don't want to duplicate, have, you know, a wasting, a wasting time. You, you might want to merge that and get the new speakers um, and sort of see how that they, they can sort of funnel that, synthesize that. And that's a qualitative process. Uh, that needs to happen, that level of uh, 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 discussion. The quantitative part I would like to uh, point out is what's already been pointed out um, in terms of what uh, my colleague Zena from Lebanon is, has mentioned, uh, that the MENA region was underrepresented even though they had participated, they had submitted uh, workshops. Having said that, I noted that even in, I can only speak from what I graded. I can't comment on what anybody else graded. I noted that there were uh, workshop proponents um, who were newcomers or were first time proponents. And, uh, but they did mention that they were, they wanted to be able to be connected to. And so, again, there's an aspect that's qualitative there uh, for the MEG. And the quantitative part is, uh, I know uh, Mr. G from China had sort of suggested the geographical capping, obviously the disagreements, and there's no right and wrong. And uh, uh, is it Carlos, Mr. Carlos yes. from Brazil? Right, had, had mentioned, had suggested, again, another uh, empirical method. And again, there's no right and wrong mathematical formula, but what I would suggest is at some point, I like, like I said, how you put the, the list already in terms of the criteria. If we throw up the pie charts that actually show the, um, uh, the underserved regions, the, the percentages, and then just come up with basic uh, uh, sets like uh, not less than this and, you know, like between a certain set, like how, how, how many more do we want to include? Uh, uh, bearing in mind, bearing in mind that we will be reducing uh, because the potential duplicates for different thematic areas. For example, I think, was it the freedom of expression? Again, because all of us graded different things, but I noticed that from what I had graded that there were certain thematic sets that had multiple, multiple proponents. So for the, for the thematic areas like you had mentioned that were not, uh, that, you know, um, that are not featured like IPv6 uh, or not thoroughly featured or like the blockchains uh, that could, you know, feature more, then that's where we could pull those up. So again, that's where I would say that, uh, Chair, it's both qualitative and quantitative. Thank you.
Okay, I'm not going to get into a debate around the qualitative versus quantitative. I, I think we just can't put a lot more quantitative data into this room and expect it to be absorbed appropriately, which is why I said I think we're, we need to rely a little bit more on the qualitative process. Um, and I need to apologize to the folks that are using the speaking cube. For some reason, my screen hadn't refreshed, so I actually had <laughs> just Carlos as the last speaker there. Um, so there's now eight or nine people in the queue um, plus one in the in the room here. Um, I, I would like people to respond directly and succinctly, if at all possible, to the rough proposal that we move forward with the list of workshops along the lines of some of the, the categories I mentioned a few moments ago to review those against the criteria that we established um, for the grading of the proposals in to date to figure out which ones ought to be taken into the program and identify at the same time any actions needed to, um, to bring them up, if necessary. A lot of them, I think, were really high scoring, so maybe there's very little to be done. Um, if we could get through that process today, we can then go away and see um, if where that leaves us in terms of total number of slots available to us and whether or not we need to do some um, further streamlining or um, the, the unknown is we don't know how many open forms are going to have come in. That's not a process that's actually under the MAG's responsibility. Um, so I don't think we can try and, you know, assume too much about that process going here. but it does have some effect on the number of rooms we would hold hold available for them. So again, if, if the people in the queue could just respond um, quickly to, are they um, okay going forward with the process I've outlined? If not, could you please suggest something else concretely um, so that we can, to Juan's point, roll up our sleeves and, and get to work. Um, so we have Aida in the queue, and then I'll go to Christine, because I saw and then we'll go back to the speaking queue. So Aida, you have the floor. So I hope that the, uh, what I wanted to say will sort of answer, but I more of a have a question. I saw that from the Eastern European group, we have only three proposals, um, and the two are put through. Uh, so, um, you know, if I evaluate the third one, uh, it will s the disbalance would s would still be there because you know whatever you do the input is not enough in order and this is why I'm very hesitant and I'm not sure if we are talking about caps and quotas for this particular IGF meeting or also for the future because unfortunately in the Eastern European uh, group I don't see things changing that drastically so we will s we would still have this gap if we put not more than 25. I hope that next year there will be like 10 inputs, but there will still be this disbalance. So I'm not sure and how, how to deal with that, but I'm okay like with the process moving forward, at least for this IGF to move forward. And thank, thank you, Ada. Um, agree with the input. And I think um, to a point that Jack made earlier, I think we need to, to uh, maybe establish another working group that looks specifically at what we can do to pick up the input side um, as we move forward here. I think at the same time, we need to perhaps have some more discussion. If we're worried about um, seeming lack of participation from governments or from other regions, is that real and what do we need to do to fix it? And I think it differs by stakeholder and probably by region as well. Um, to your other point, um, I, it doesn't feel like we're going to caps and quotas in this process, and this MAG obviously can't constrain a future MAG, so um, just to, to answer that question. Christina, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to um, say that it's a good thing that we are keen about diversity. So uh, let us acknowledge this. I mean, I think it's really positive to see that we're all trying actually to, to maintain the diversity, whether in terms of stakeholder groups or regions, and that's much appreciated. And I also agree on, the, on, the, on your uh, proposal, Chair. Um, I, think, I think, again, quota and cap won't work simply because uh, there is not enough interest from uh, st some stakeholder groups or uh, from regions to put forward. So, so the input coming in is already low. So whatever we do, uh, if we don't address that problem, it will remain the same. So um, I also think it's only fair that if we're going to review, <clears throat> that we review against the criteria that we've put forward. And, and this is fair for, for everyone that has um, uh, abided uh, by the rules and, uh, and was uh, judged by the criteria. Uh, but I also want us to reflect for the future. I know future MAGs would uh, work the way uh, they want to. I think we should address the problem uh, 
for for future for the future and for next years so uh, personally i was approached by stakeholder by um, uh, proponents from the region and from other regions saying how do we do a proposal so i would suggest that if we can have some process uh, resource persons maybe that are put on the official site of the igf that could mentor uh, new proponents or help them to create the proposal in a good way. That, that may be helpful. Um, another issue, we could identify um, imbalanced trends that we've seen for a couple of years and then think about how we can do some positive discrimination that is early on put forward very transparently. Like, for example, and that's just an example, encouraging returning uh, proponents or those who are very good at doing proposals to engage others as co-proponents with them in their, in their proposal. So they would get a plus point if they go to, an under, to a region that is not very represented and get a stakeholder from that region. That's just an example. And then finally, I, I want to um, uh, say again what I mentioned yesterday is about that we have to make use of, or we should maybe make use of the NRI network and, um, and specifically to address those imbalances. So uh, NRIs could be closer to governments in their areas that are not there. Um, and they also definitely will help with the regional imbalance. So I, um, I, I think we should give that some thought. Thank you. No, I mean, many good points, Christina. Your last point um, was also important in that there is a request in front of the MAG to support um, 12 NRI-led workshops, which would be each one of the workshops has to have participation from at least three different regions in terms of developing that workshop and proposal. Um, um, Assuming that that goes forward, um, that would actually certainly support a lot of the regional um, diversity as well. Um, next in the line is Ginger. Ginger, you have the floor. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for all of your participation. With all respect, admiration, full appreciation, I must object to the way we're managing the game. I'm really sorry, I know it's difficult. I'm also aware that you can't see me here biting my fingers, jumping up and down, and waving, waving a flag I don't have. By the time I'm allowed to make an intervention, the moment has passed. I think we have a problem here that we must address, although we have made great strides, of course, I, as a, an advocate, will never be fully satisfied, but I do think this is a point we must address immediately. We have to use one queuing system, and we have to respect it. I will be as brief as I can on other points, on capture quotas, but also any discussion of leveling, you know, leveling uh, group input, we don't have the full information we need on the composition of a group of a, and of a workshop. So I think it's very difficult at this point to bring up in very any kind of tight restriction because we don't know, all we know is who was the first proposer. So I don't, I think we have to put that discussion aside until we can um, have the proper information to apply stricter measures on, on this point. Um, I do agree that all these points rates are extremely important, but I think we have to be more flexible and move ahead as Lynn and many others have mentioned. I do think that it's important that we remember that a conference is normally set by content. And while I totally respect the need for multi-stakeholder and respect the need for diversity, when we let the medium and the process take over the substance of a, con of, of a conference, we are doing ourselves and, and the whole internet governance community a disservice. So I think we need to put, uh, as many people have mentioned, more emphasis on grading or choosing on based on content and improving those proposals with work. I'm sure there are many people who are willing to mentor and work with groups on both mergers and on improving substance and presentation of the proposal. Thank you very much. 
Uh, thank you, Ginger. Good comments. And my sincere apologies. As I said, my screen wasn't refreshing. I am now trying to remember to manually refresh it frequently. It was it was um, stuck on just the last speaker. So that was just um, just a technical glitch, and and uh, we're, we're trying to pay much more attention to it now. Um, Jack, you have the floor. Thanks, Lynn. Um, just very quickly, I just wanted to check, are there 80 workshops in, in total that we're looking for, or what's the total number? Um, I think because then that will help to think about what's the, what's the, you know, the first basic that we will say, okay, so what's the 72 based on, right? Um, and then secondly, MENA is not a region that is being pulled out, so you can't actually see how many proposals, um, how many proposals are from MENA, um, from the Arab region, and how many is identified. So is that something that can be addressed? Or is that too much to ask for at this point? Because I also totally recognise that. Um, and I support your process in going forward. Um, and the other thing is uh, this kind of like the quota gap thing. Um, I think sort of I think what would be very helpful actually is to add statistical layers, maybe not at this moment, but maybe in the future, um, future uh, workshop selection process, to add the statistical layers that was already mentioned earlier around the actual numbers of speakers within the session and the stakeholder groups within the session, rather than to try and add a quota or a quantitative factor at the top, because that's too easily gamed. Um, you know, for me, like, you know, I'll just put yeah, if I had anyone at all, which was possibly from a government in the Global South, first time, I'll just put that as the workshop. So it's just too easily gamed, and I think it will defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do, which is to increase diversity. Um, and I also support what Ginger is saying in terms of looking at content and substance a lot more than to sort of, sort of balance between the two, right? One is around sort of representation, the other is really to look at the content itself. Um, and also in previous years, um, we looked at flash sessions and accepting flash sessions as one of the possible ways to address some of the imbalances. So maybe that's also something we can consider um, moving forward from here. Uh, thank you, Jack. I'm going to ask Chengatai to comment on the first two questions in a moment. Um, we are, I don't think Miguel is actually on the call. I believe, and if somebody, I don't know if maybe Eleonora can, that Miguel is also um, hoping to do some of what he did, the same thing we did last year. Um, was take some of the proposals that were close but maybe not accepted and move them into the new session stream. But I'm not entirely sure of that, and we can verify with that with him when he comes back online. Changatai, to Jack's first two points. Yes, um, your first point for the 80 workshops, uh, this is what we're looking at here for 80 workshops. That, that doesn't mean that there's going to be 80 workshops on the schedule um, when all is said and done because Sorry, uh, be because um, some of the workshops are 60 minutes, some are 30, some are you know an hour and a half. So once we plot everything into the schedule, we may have space for more workshops. So uh, when I was speaking to to Lynn and discussing this, uh, one of the suggestions was to have a waiting list, uh, you know, a short waiting list, which we can put in more workshops if the space becomes available. Um, for the MENA, yes. Um, we, it is. It will be difficult to uh, to to do it this time round. But you know, as this is a continuous improvement process, next time round we will have a subfield for MENA, and we can have a subfield for all the other regions. You know, Central Asia or um, other regions that we we can. Um, and the same goes for the speakers. Yeah, uh, it's the same answer. Mm -hmm. And just to build on what Chengatai had just said as well, the, um, I was talking about the NRI. I should have used the word sessions, um, not workshops earlier. If we talk about sessions or sort of activities that are on site during an IGF, there's approximately 200 sessions or 200 activities when you add in the open forums, the workshops, the dynamic coalition meetings, the NRI sessions, et cetera. So it's that total profile that the participants actually see, and yet the MAG only directly oversees um, roughly half of that. And I think we need to maybe think, you know, differently about how we align some of these things. Maybe we align the open forum timetable to come in at the same time as the workshop proposals or something. Or, but I think again, this is work we can can bring forward in some of the uh, working groups of the MAG. Um, so going to the queue, Shagoon, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just, I just want to add my, uh, my little voice to the issue of uh, capping or the quota system. Um, 
to be fair with the other regions, while I was doing the review of the of the workshop proposals, I have, um, most of the topics are really, uh, to my own um, understanding, they are very relevant. And I think it might be extremely very difficult to say that um, because of um, a certain criteria, some uh, <coughs> proposals should be reconsidered when they have actually been uh, nominated. Again, then I want us to look at the diversity from the perspective of the, the speakers, because I also, also observe that some of these proposals have um, uh, included diversity of, uh, of the speakers. And to me, I think uh, that reflects something, at least a change to a larger extent. But they say that uh, law is uh, made for man. A man is not made for law. I don't know if that is a universal principle. Uh, uh, I really want us to make a decision, especially in the areas of encouraging diversity from the other region. Um, we know that we may not be able to implement such a uh, decision, but let it be recorded that uh, the new mag might probably take off from there. Let us have a decision on the capping system so that um, we can encourage other regions. Like for example, in as much that uh, I receive a lot of proposal from African side, and um, because there is a need for me to be fair in my judgment, some of them are not really, me, uh, you know, qualified to be considered asked based on the requirement. But if we have a quota systems, I think it will help us to address that. Number two. I, I do not want to agree with the fact that if we have that quota system, some region may not be able to um, uh, um, probably meet up. Even if they don't meet up, then we can open up the system for the other region to fill in. But let us have a system that will add, at least encourage diversity and so, so that at the end of the day, there will be a sense of uh, you know, participation and belonging. Thank you. So I think everyone's agreed on the need to um, improve diversity. Um, I think that suggestion would um, be more appropriate in either the working group on workshop evaluations or in maybe it's in one of the working group on IGF improvements or the multi-year strategic work plan because um, it's going to take some time to actually um, get through an appropriate discussion with a mag on that. Um, so I, I didn't assume that you were suggesting that we try and do that today in the middle of this process. And I would like some indications to whether or not you would support moving forward according to the process that I outlined a few moments ago. Can you give me a quick response to that, Shagoon? Hello. Well, um, from my own point of view, I'm aware that the the time is not there, and we cannot just stop uh, all of a sudden in the middle of this process to make a decision. But let us have at least a position, a strong position that can communicate the fact that uh, at least for the future sake, there, will be, there should be need for that mag to reconsider the issues of uh, diversity in terms of uh, representations of these regions. We need to make a clear statement and a strong position. I think it's very, very necessary. Thank you. Thank you. I think that ties in nicely with all the pieces of work with respect to working on the input. Um, so I will put that in that category and, and, and take that forward. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Rasha, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, Again, I mean, we're hearing a lot. I think we're hearing a lot of the same things. We just need to iron them out. Uh, and the words keep being repeated, you know, to, to address the imbalance. And I think it's important that we acknowledge that we do have two components, an input and an output, and that the imbalance is with the input, not with the output. Uh, I think that's important to, it's important to make that distinction. So for the coming grounds, for the, for the long term, we need to think of how do we improve the input? How do we improve the diversity in, of the input? And I have a, a couple of questions. I was just wondering if uh, the Secretariat can give us any information on 
how the speaker workshop collaboration space was used. Was it used enough? What, do people know about it? Do we have a sense of how useful that was? Do we need to publicize it more? Um, how, how can we improve on that uh, particular uh, resource? Um, and the other thing which actually Christine mentioned, I mean, we, we, some of us are listed as resource persons, but again, you know, do, do particularly new proposers, do they know that they can approach us for help with, um, with designing uh, a proposal, even if we're not on the proposal, so we don't have to be speakers, but we can help uh, put together a proposal or, or, um, or guide them through, through the process. Uh, so these are just questions uh, to improve the input. Uh, to deal with, with the questions that we, that we now have, and generally speaking, I do, I do support um, the proposal that you've made, uh, Chair. Um, but I, I have a question regarding a suggestion that I had made on email. Can we possibly get back to, to some of the proposers with a chance to improve their proposals. Do we, have, do we have the luxury to, do we have that time, that kind of time to give them like a week or so, uh, or even a few days to, to uh, improve their proposals and come back to us, and then we can maybe uh, include some of these workshops, or that would help us decide which of these workshops uh, to, to include, or do we have to make that decision by the end of the day, today or tomorrow? Um, to answer Jacques' question, I, I counted only four workshops from the MENA region, and none of them were, were accepted. So, I mean, that's, that's a clear imbalance there. Uh, if, if I, while I have the microphone, <laughs> if I have to push, I would obviously push for all four, but if I have to push for some of them, I would push for at least number 140 and number 246 uh, to be included. Uh, I, I do not support caps, but I'm wondering if maybe we can consider a minimum a minimum number of sessions to be included for, for each region or sub-region. And I don't mean a minimum in, in general, but I mean a minimum percentage of the workshops submitted from that region. Because we need to make sure that people work within these regions to submit workshops. We need to get them involved in the process. I'm, I'm not for just getting them all through you know, just, just because they are a minority. I think it's, it's very important to get them through, but I think they need to realize that there's an effort that they need to make to get through. So I would maybe support like a minimal percentage of maybe 50% per region or something like that, or per sub-region, um, just to make sure that, that all workshops are, or that all regions are represented. So if there are four regions from the MENA region, I would say at least two should get in. Uh, and again, that's a very rough estimate off the top of my mind, but it's just a, a suggestion for consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Rasha. Um, a, a couple of quick comments. With respect to the more time to go back out, um, I think the process allows that, but possibly not in the way you're thinking. We have conditional acceptance. We've always had conditional acceptance. The proposals we're going to go through um, are going to be evaluated against the criteria that all of them were evaluated against that were published up front. That is the only thing that's fair. And if they're found wanting in some areas, then I think it's upon the MAG to note that and go back and work with them to um, uh, bring them up against that acceptance. So I think we meet what you're looking for, but I would use um, sort of different, different words. Um, you know, we need to, to move on. I've now got another seven people in the queue um, and G, and I'd like to close the queue at that and come back and see where we are on the proposal so we can start actually looking substantively at the workshops in front of us. Um, I don't think there's support for caps and quotas. I think introducing that in the middle of this process goes contrary to the criteria and the guidance we put out. Um, I think it doesn't allow us to look at open forums which would, I think, skew significantly um, a lot of the, the uh, statistics we're actually looking in, at today. So I think that's another thing in our process that we actually need to um, look at going forward. Um, I also you know, play back some of Ginger's comments in terms of the content. I think um, some of these discussions really talk to some longer-term strategic discussions and very, very, very clearly talk to the need to work on the input side of the equation. And I think that's a specific effort the MAG could go away and, and support. But so um, the last one in the queue um, is Julian. There's, um, as I said, sort of seven or eight folks in there now. And I, I think I just refreshed, so I think that's actually current. Um, and with your, with your um, support, I'd like to go forward and try and 
and um, move us forward to the next step after that. So Kenta, you had the floor. I'm very glad to hear from you too as a new MAG member and a new voice. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, this, is my fr oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> this is my first time to take the floor, and uh, I really appreciate the Secretariat and the Chairs and uh, all other MAG members' efforts to organize this uh, IGF. And uh, actually, you know, after listening to the everyone's uh, comments and opinions, uh, to be honest, you know, I cannot have feeling that, you know, people are really criticizing the statistics <laughs> or just, uh, you know, us. I mean, you know, because, you know, um, there's, uh, you know, uh, some, you know, there are some uh, criteria uh, when we grading the, you know, proposals, uh, including the diversity. So that, you know, then that it has came out in front of us. So we have to accept this result as it is. And now it's not time to discuss the methodology, language, procedure, or something like that. So, you know, we have only two days. We have to discuss the content and uh, you know proposals of the, you know, uh, the, you know this year's IGF. And uh, I really wanted to, you know, dis discuss the, you know, uh, wildcard. You know, although, you know, at first I didn't accept, you know, the concept of the wildcard, but now I, I can understand the concept of the wildcard. So I, I really want to talk about the, you know, wildcard. And actually, you know, uh, in addition to that, you know, I would like to make one another comment is that I mean, you know, uh, people, you know, some people have some kind of, you know, uh, criticisms or just, you know have, you know, a complaint about the result of this, you know, uh, workshop selection process. But, you know, I think everything came, you know, came back to us. I mean, you know, you know, I actually, you know, there are some kind of inversions that we have to improve, you know, uh, but, you know, as Chengitai said, you know, uh, yesterday, you know, this inversions, you know, uh, could be improved in the near future. I mean, the future IGFs. So, you know, we, of course, you know, while we have to think about seriously about these imbalances, but it's not time to discuss, you know, uh, overall imbalances. And, uh, and also, the, you know, it is our responsibility and the law to, you know, encourage, you know, our constituency to, you know, uh, submit more and more proposals and more and more good proposals, you know, uh, in front of us. So it is very our role to in invite, you know, uh, more and more proposals. So, uh, and also the, you know, uh, uh, regarding the uh, caps and quotas, uh, simply I cannot support it because, you know, same discussion will be made, you know, the, uh, as now. So, and uh, finally, you know, um, I'll just stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kenta. Uh, Flavio, Flavio Wagner, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Do you hear me? Yeah. So uh, I would give uh, two or three uh, concrete uh, uh, suggestions regarding the, the, the our procedure now for, for selecting the final list of workshops. The first one is uh, I agree in that we try to balance uh, our, our final selection considering geographic regions and stakeholder groups as already discussed, but let's try to avoid selecting subjects that are already very well represented. If uh, Eleonora, could you uh, see, uh, uh, show us uh, slide number six? Yeah. So we can see there, there are some tags, some subjects that are very well represented already among the top 72. So when trying to pick uh, new workshops from underrepresented uh, stakeholder groups or geographic regions. Let's try to select also underrepresented subjects, so as an additional criterion. So the, the second suggestion is very, very similar to this one, is that we try to identify independent of the, the stakeholder group or uh, re geographic region of the proposals, which are the subjects that are important and that are not very well represented. We had the example of the IPv6 already circulating on the, on the list. Maybe we can identify other subjects also that are very important and that, that did not make it to the top 72 uh, in the moment. And a third suggestion, suggestion is that we don't know exactly how many slots we will have at the end. So we are working considering we will have 80, but it depends on the open forums and other things that will be decided later on. So maybe there will be space for some additional workshops above the 80. 
So if this is the case, I suggest that we prepare a kind of waiting list that when considering those uh, balancing uh, efforts here regarding geographic regions, stakeholder groups, and, and, and subjects, that we prepare a list not of only eight workshops to make to 80, but a little bit higher, so 15 or 20, I don't know how many, so that the secretariat and the chair have this list already prepared, and if there is room, additional room, then they just pick from the list. Thank you. Yeah. I think those are excellent suggestions, and I know Changatai is fully supportive of the waiting list as well, having, in fact, enacted that <laughs> previously as well. Thank you, Flavio. Renata, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. I would like to first agree with Flavio on the, on the represented subjects and on the waiting list. However, um, I will go back to the point of regional diversity, uh, still thinking that we need to include underserved regions as well, but uh, following up on Russia's point, balanced percentages is the way we can think about this numerically. And, um, uh, and the point of format, the 70%, almost 70% uh, panels around tables, uh, even if good moderators, uh, I think it's a lot of time spent on this. And uh, for all that, the solution, again, uh, I, I would propose is communicating with session organizers, but we'll come back to the point of mentoring. If we are talking about addressing imbalances and thinking about eight workshops only, uh, I think we need to start uh, also to think about a pilot experience in mentoring. And uh, this can be done uh, to address the, these more urgent imbalances. So I would propose these wo eight workshops to be uh, for a mentoring or a guiding experience. Um, and uh, a one pager uh, on communication and how to do more interactive sessions could uh, already go a long way. And uh, so I will uh, think that to, to conclude addressing balances, specifically on improving diversity, I would never leave this as a work for one working group. Uh, this is uh, something that the whole MAG has to consider. Thanks. Uh, th thank you, Renata. I think those are a number of, number of good points. Um, Elizabeth, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, Yes, I also agree with a number of the good points just made by Renata. I think those things would be very helpful. I also support um, the suggestion that uh, Flavio made. Um, I'd like to go back to um, just pick up on a comment um, that Christine made and uh, not to go into that question too deeply right now because we're, we're focused on um, the workshops, but I think it is pertinent to what we're discussing and, and what we're trying to achieve. So um, Christine mentioned, um, and, and I believe the chair also mentioned, um, the NRI sessions and workshops, this idea that um, there could be these tw 12 um, slots designated um, to NRI proposals that haven't yet been put forward. And that might complement, just as the um, open forums might complement the um, missing diversity in government participation, um, the NRIs might uh, enhance the regional and, and other um, uh, diversity that's missing. I would caution us as we think of that um, to what the impact, the longer term impact will be of separating that out. Because when I think about the NRIs and their participation in the program and enriching the diversity and the development and, and, and contributing, whether it's a government or business uh, or somebody else from their region to, um, to participate. I'm very concerned that if we have 12 separate spots and that becomes something that we entrench in the structure of the program, that we would then create a mechanism by which they would not participate in the workshop evaluation. And so in this goal that we're talking about, we need to, we have an output we're trying to rebalance that is um, 
uh, sort of a systemic consequence of, a, of an imbalanced input. And yet, if we carve off this other place, we're actually going to, we, we have the propensity to compound that problem. And I would much, much rather see us encourage NRIs to be part of the process, to put in um, uh, workshops with uh, broader community members and to be integrated into the program. So I wanted to say that. And I think the other thing, um, so I think we need to keep in mind this proposal as well as the open forums, the D DC sessions, as contributing to the overall balance. And that raised for me in thinking about it another concern that I have, which is that the MAG over time, the MAG's role is for the program. We used to actually be completely restricted in the definition and the terms of reference to that, and now we've you know, taken on other longer term projects and vision. But I guess I'm concerned that the MAG's role in what it's responsible for on the program has actually been declining. And so we're now facing a situation where we're looking at trying to assess a portion of the program and deliver the same diversity when we're only in control of part of it. And I'm not asking for more control of that, but I, I do want us to be aware that while on the MAG we represent ourselves, we are selected by stakeholder group and representation, and there is a constituency of stakeholders that are looking to us to make sure that, that, our, that their, their interests and their interest in participating and engaging is it's factored, and so we should be able to bring that in, and um, and so uh, you know, f looking at it with my private sector representative hat on, how can I help in bringing and uh, holding the responsibility to the stakeholders for that balance um, when there's a whole component of of work where private sector may actually end up being less influenced or less, le less present and less participatory or issues and, 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 and um, scope might be actually less relevant to them because of a whole component part. So I don't want to belabor that, but we are talking about balance in the program and our responsibility. So I, I, I want us to maybe have that in our awareness to, um, and to put that definitely into um, the work that we do in the longer term and, and evaluation of that. Um, and, and, and I'll, I'll stop there. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. I think those are some, some very good points. And as kind of an organic system here, some things have evolved over time. And I do think it's time for us to, as we're still relatively early in the 10 year cycle to, um, to revisit where we go forward. I think some of, um, that, um, work that you mentioned, um, would take place in the multi-year strategic work plan, um, working group and would fully involve the MAG. Um, I do think at this point in time we need to recognize that NRIs are different from DCs, are different from best practice forums, are different from the workshops that we're responsible for. And I think it behooves us to do what we can to support their specific request because it is advancing their work, which is advancing all of our work. So I think we need to figure out how we, how we pull some of that in this year, call it or think of it as a pilot or something. If we're not certain it's something we want to say we're definitely ingraining, but, but err on the side of, of supporting those that are really active in terms of driving so many issues of internet governance forward and figure out how we make some of the more programmatic aspects work through a, through a separate, separate effort. Can I just ask a follow-up question? Just to, to your response, because I, I absolutely agree with the goal of, of making sure that there's a fitting place for them. I guess I'd really like to understand what it is the problem that we would solve in separating it? Why, why, what is it that they can't access through the open program? Why, why do they feel outside or that they, they, they need to be protected in some way from the structure? Because I think if that really is the, if there is that, that kind of a problem, then, then I, I desperately would like to understand it to better help. And I think that that's something that would help us deliberate how do we address the, that better? Because I, I don't have a clear understanding of that. It was, was fabulous and really insightful, and I learned a lot about them and, 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 and wholeheartedly support um, how, uh, you know, sort of um, 
how beneficial it is to have them and, and, and to make sure that we're working together. I just feel a concern about excluding them from the mainstay of, of what we do. I think my only comment, not to belabor this, and hopefully we'll have time tomorrow afternoon, although it's looking less and less likely, <laughs> um, to address this. I don't actually think it's a problem that we're solving. I think we're actually recognizing that the NRIs have a need to do some things to organize amongst themselves in something they think would be interest of interest to the broad audience, and they're looking for a place in a venue to do that, which is different than I have a workshop that I want to submit according to the theme of the IGF. It's more facilitating and supporting their work um, so that they can advance their work when they go back as well. And this is certainly, a, in their minds, a logical place to do that. But I mean, I, I throw that out there not to kind of tease everybody with a discussion, simply, I think, to take it out of the, the, the notion of it's a problem that anybody's trying to solve. And I mean, again, I think there's probably a similar discussion to be had with some of the other um, events that take place too. But, if I could, I know, you know, I can see by faces in the room that people are dying to get into this discussion, but um, if we can move forward and if we have time tomorrow, and if not, maybe we have a separate um, virtual mag call dedicated to, to this with appropriate NRI participation as well. Um, so with that, going to the speaking queue, I have um, Liesl in the queue. Liesl, you have the floor. Right. Thank you, Chair. Um, and one of the benefits of being later in the list is I can react to some of the comments that have been made. And so I'd um, uh, like to, to do that. But I guess my first question was um, about how the mechanism we're going to use. And I think you said you were going to answer this. And I'm not sure that you have. So if you don't if you, um, <laughs> allow me. Um, the process by which we're going to um, like what you need from us in reaction to what we get from the government proposals that were sent forward. Thank you very much, Shangatai, for working so quickly to do that for us. And the additional submissions of diversity and um, regional diversity and balance that we're looking for in what is now called the wild card process. <laughs> um, probably need to write that down maybe or take on the the um, mantle of uh, the burden of doing that because I coined the term I think but um, one thing I want to strongly agree with is Renata's comment about mentoring those that come in in the wild card process because when I said it in March that was exactly what I meant was that if each of us are reviewing our proposals the, our set of proposals um, of 50, whatever they were, and one we rated low because of the criteria upon which we were um, evaluating them, but we thought there was something, there was a nugget in there that could be cultivated. It was precisely that me mentoring process that I thought would would uh, be hugely beneficial for that. So I really wanna, I wanted to support that comment. I also wanted to support Flavio's notion of a waiting list for um, uh, whatever number we come up with, the 80, um, of a waiting list. I only note that I don't know if that means that we are then abandoning the 81 to 91 or uh, 81 to 91 that are in the ranking or if we come up with a new waiting list. So how does this process of diversity uh, injecting, trying to inject more diversity and balance into the program affect that, that waiting list. So that would be my one question. Um, and then if I would make, if you, for those that have talked about the missing regional diversity or balance, like Rasha's good comment about the proposals from the MENA region, if we are going to be, um, if, if they haven't, if they ha could put those forward to that group of, you know, that bucket that we're going to be looking at for this um, remaining eight plus waiting list uh, bucket, then that would be really helpful if they haven't already done that. Um, and then uh, I just want to remind the, the group or clarify my understanding of not only the new formats that, that uh, the new formats process, because we did include the flash sessions and things like that in this evaluation process. And so we have done some of that. Um, and 
Um, the other piece of that was um, preserving some slots for hot topics that might come up in the intervening months between now and December. And I don't know where that plays into this, this bucket of um, workshops that we're considering uh, beyond, the, beyond the 72. And then lastly, I really feel like I, I would really like to strongly um, agree with the comments that Elizabeth put forward on the NRIs um, and their real estate in the program. Um, not, not just because of the, the pro quote unquote problem, you know, I get your point, Lynn, about, you know, maybe we're not trying to solve a problem, but I, I, what is the goal then? Um, and I really associate with her comments about the, the fear of carving out a new process for them in this, in the global IGF that doesn't in a way integrate them into that discussion. So I guess I'd be interested in what the objective is and what they are looking for and what we are going to accommodate for them. And this, for this IGF is one thing, and I think we need to put a fine point on that and define it, and then agree with you that if it needs to be um, further considered, that that is probably part of, you know, the strategic plan or improvements or whatever, you know, whatever um, improvement process we go through for evolving the program and the MAG's decision making. I'm sorry to take up so much time, but I did have the benefit of having other folks say really interesting things before me. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's it for now. Thank you. And there may be other places in the program, sorry, just to back to the NRIs. I, you know, they do have a ma main session slot, as I understand it. As I understand it, that's de facto at this point. Am I correct? And then perhaps there are other ways to accommodate their um, conven convening factor at the global IGF other than workshop real estate, such as, I don't know, day zero, lunch sessions, unconference. I don't know, I, but I just, I feel the same tension that Elizabeth described, and I'm not sure how, what we're, how we're approaching that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Liesl. And we'll come to your process questions after we finish the, the list of speakers. Um, but specifically to the NRIs, I'm, I'm sure the NRIs have found the discussion over the last five, ten minutes helpful in terms of the things that they need to further elucidate for the, for the MAG here. Um, I, I just want to address one thing, I think. It's not the MAG or the NRI are off in a corner meeting and not participating in, in the IGF, because I think they are all over the IGF. They've been in the CE and B. They're in um, the best practice forums. They're in a host of things. So they are very, very present. And I just didn't want anybody who might be newer to this conversation to think that this was an either or conversation with respect to the NRIs, because I, I, I just don't believe that's true at all. Um, but that doesn't take away from the point that we really need, I think, to, to um, understand how we sort of share the space, if you will. Uh, anyway. I'm just agreeing with you. Oh. <laughs> um. Just for the record, I agree with that point. I think they are integrated in all of the work that we do. So again, why the separate consideration process, I guess, is my question. And what else can we do? Uh, uh, just one point. Yes, they are integrated, but they still need um, space for themselves to discuss amongst themselves. Um, they do support a lot of the um, IGF work, so I think it's more, more of a balance of, a, you know, paying them back for all the effort they've done to support all the various other aspects of the um, IGF. Um, I think well, I'll it can beg, be said. Yes, I, it may well can be said, but I don't think that's a, that is um, specific to the NRIs, and so I would I would that opens another whole can of worms. They're not the only. I mean, I, I completely agree with Elizabeth that the pre presentation that Anya gave yesterday and the work of the NRIs is ex extremely valuable. But I don't know what that means for paying them back for their efforts. I mean, what about everybody else? I, I'm sorry. 
Okay, so I just going to wait in here one more time, I think, just see if we can leave it at a better place, because the problem with leaving these rooms and these discussions like that is they, they kind of have their own fester, <laughs> and it takes a lot more time to fix later. Um, my understanding, and we can try and carve out some time tomorrow maybe to have some of the NRIs speak, is that the NRIs, and if we think of it not as a workshop, but, but they're 90-odd NRIs. 30 of them believe that it's important for them to share their experiences on what's happening with some cybersecurity or privacy practices in countries. And they actually want the opportunity to be able to share those learnings, learn, move forward. The IGF is a great place to do that because they're here. Their participation obviously supports um, the IGF. And hopefully the IGF actually um, is, is supporting them and giving them a, a reason as well for their local efforts because of the, the global efforts. So I think it's facilitating that. We have a significant part of our community that has expressed a need for a meeting venue on site with the IGF to facilitate their work. That's what um, we've been trying to address. I think that's the request in, in front of us. Um, I, I really don't want this to feel like an us and them set of discussions here, and I don't think that's anybody's intent. So if we can just assume that everybody is really adamant and really passionate about advancing Internet and Internet governance for the benefit of people across the world, and we simply need to figure out how these various structures play together going forward, I think that would be the, um, the most appropriate way to leave this discussion. And Lisa, I don't think you're saying anything different, or, or Elizabeth either. Um, but. I just want to make sure that we're um, hopefully trying to leave it on a, on a positive, open discussion. And I'm, I'm really interested in hearing from the NRIs at some point about how they'd like to take some of this discussion forward. Is that a separate virtual meeting, you know, with the MAG that people have time to prepare for on both sides? And maybe we can, you know, think through the agenda quite, quite carefully and, and work it going forward. So if I can, with a deep breath, and I hope that left us in a better place, I'm not entirely sure. Um, the three people that have been in the queue for some time here are Julian, G, and Rasha. And then we will, um, frankly, close, see if we can agree a process. Um, we'll be at the lunch hour at that point, so we would come back in our afternoon session and hopefully, to Juan's point, roll up our sleeves and get to work on some substantive discussion. Oh, did I not refresh the queue again? I was so engaged in that last discussion, I didn't refresh the queue. Okay, so. We will draw it um, after Haida. Um, Kalian, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, well, I hope uh, I won't be so repetitive. I think uh, most of the things I have to um, highlight uh, are related to my uh, previous um, colleagues at the MAC, but uh, basically I want to uh, say that uh, I think the process uh, so far has been uh, fine and was uh, implemented uh, as uh, discussed related to the um, evaluation uh, of the workshops. So I agree that uh, we need to uh, work on the government uh, participation uh, it seems that one of the proposals uh, it's very close to the um, um, to the cut uh, of proposals with a score of uh, four, and uh, maybe we can look and um, so that one m maybe could be accepted, and uh, look at the other ones and see if uh, they are linked to um, subjects subjects that are not. Uh, uh, represented yet that we have on screen now and um, also uh, as uh, we were discussing the merging proposals could be also a way to include others uh, uh, as we are recommended with IPv6 already and um, I think uh, uh, that could be also a way that we can include other uh, subjects, uh, as uh, Flavio just uh, mentioned. And uh, regarding NRIs, uh, uh, I think that um, it helps a lot to increase participation from different regions. Uh, I think in the case of, for instance, of Colombia, um, we see that uh, are more interested in uh, participate and present more uh, workshop proposals. So I think NRIs will be a key platform, and we should uh, work in 
uh, better uh, give them um, all the um, tools and all the um, um, uh, way that uh, can uh, bring uh, these issues to the different regions so we have more uh, proposals in, in the future. And uh, as we did last year, using the flash session as a way to uh, include, uh, include workshops that are not out automatically accepted uh, as other spaces like open forums. I understand that we have four flash sessions accepted already. Uh, maybe these flash sessions could be, uh, of course, accepted, and but that will increase maybe the number of uh, slots uh, that we can add to those um, that are available uh, 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 from the cut point. That's my thank you. Thank you, Julian. And that does increase the <laughs> the availability. Could you tell us the um, maybe offline the number of the a workshop proposal you were mentioning at the top of your comments. Sorry. Could you tell me the tell us the number of the workshop proposal you were suggesting at the top of your comments? Or just send it into the secretariat. I think we're trying to keep a list of the things which have come up either by workshop proposal or topic. Uh, you mean the proposal of the government? Yes. You can just send it in um, to the secretary, and we'll we'll put it on the. I I don't know. Sorry. In the interest of time, let's move on to the next speaker, and you can just send it to us. Um, I will send it offline. Thank you, Julian. Oops. So next in the queue, Rasha, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, very briefly, just um, I would like to um, to emphasize my agreement on Elizabeth on the NRIs thing. <laughs> uh, but also my, my main point really is about the uh, evaluation of topics by regions. And just, you know, uh, I have one sentence to make. You know, freedom of expression in the MENA region, for example, is very different from freedom of expression in Geneva. I mean, you wouldn't recognize the topics. They're <laughs> completely different. So, you know, we just need to keep that in mind when we're evaluating workshops. Thank you. Thank you, Rasha. And thank you for the brevity of your comments, too, because we are coming up to the lunch hour. Juan, you have the floor. Yes. Apologies for taking the floor again, but I'm not going to apologize anymore because that's how I am, so I don't want to apologize <laughs> for being it. So, anyway, I, I, after hearing uh, Elizabeth, I think that uh, just briefly I want to uh, remind everybody about the mandate of the MAG and what we're doing here because she said that maybe our power is not enough or that. Well, it's always good to go back to the basics. You know, this forum was created by the Tunis Agenda in 2005, in, and you can read it. It's from paragraph 72 to 78, uh, in which the mandate is for the Secretary General to convene this multi stakeholder, and the mandate is there. You, you could see. All the things that we're discussing here are already there. But it's very important. This is convened by the Secretary General. And of course, because the Secretary General has a lot of work in his plate, he selected, he disposed that he needed an advisory group to help to convene this IGF every year. And it's a multi-stakeholder advisory group because this is a multi-stakeholder uh, event. And very wisely, the Secretary General selects a diverse in geographical um, areas from different backgrounds advisory group, because in the diversity of the advisory group, it's, it's how the Secretary General wisdom that it will be, um, uh, be the advice that he will receive, that could have all the views and everybody will be covered there. And this is not um, only because he is goodwill, because in paragraph 75, the Secretary General has to report to member states on the operation of the forum, of the Internet Governance Forum. So this is a very, very well established thing that is his responsibility, and he's doing it through us. So once that we are selected 
We are the guys. We are the ones that has to uh, do the, the planning of this. We are the, the, the persons to do it. So uh, Elizabeth was saying that we were losing control. No, if we are losing control, we have to regain the control. Because we are, in, in the first time I came to the MAC, somebody asked me, and I said that we are like the wedding planners. That we have to take care of catering, take care of the balance in the guest list between the, the bride and the groom, you know. And we, we have to be here that the, the priest is on time, everything is there, the uh, flowers and everything. And to be perfect, that everybody is happy, the photograph. If the newlywed divorce in a year time, that is not our, per uh, our problem. <laughs> That could happen, and the family then between the groom and the guy will start uh, fighting us. But we have to plan the wedding perfectly. And I, all, I will finish my intervention remembering the classics. You know, the classics, some of the classics said, you can't always get what you want. You know, <laughs> you can't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, well, you do just fine, you get what you need. Thank you, Juan. <laughs> um, uh, next, we have um, G in the queue, and then we'll go to Cheryl. Um, G. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to thank Juan uh, for his uh, excellent speech. Um, I'm the one who wants to insist on get what I need. First <laughs> is the quota. Whatever we call it cap, cap system or minimal or maximum, we need a quota system. Second, I want to point out that the input and output analysis is unfair, and I don't accept it. Um, the number of inputs, uh, I mean, the proposals from Asia Pacific region is low, but I don't think they are of low quality. Different regions have different perspectives and different standards. To ask Europeans to judge whether the Asian Pacific proposal is good or not is unfair. Well, uh, this in, in, in this, um, also, it will be unfair for Asian people to judge whether this, uh, this speaker from Asia, uh, Ghana or from Zambia is uh, famous enough or not. It's also unfair. So I, don't, I do think that we need to carve up the whole pie and let different regions to, to, to divide their own, own share of the pie in, inside their region. That will make things more, you know, more, more uh, equal, uh, uh, per, more, per, more or less perfect. Um, second, uh, about the waiting list, uh, I don't know what kind of waiting list we are uh, handling now. Um, my uh, preference is that uh, in the waiting list, uh, since Asia is underrepresented in the current top 72, Asia and uh, MENA and some sub-regional uh, proposals which are absent in it should be given priority rather than given those high graders from European countries. Those high graders from European countries should be out first. And uh, about the 72 proposals, I think there are lots of repetitions about human rights, gender issues. I, I think we need to ask them to converge in a safe some place for for Asian proposals. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ji. Um, it seems as though we're back to the top of the uh, the top of the meeting. Um, I think some of your suggestions are worthy of consideration, but considered deliberate consideration for future processes. Um, I don't think we can change the criteria, the the methodology, um, those sort of things as as dramatically as you're proposing in the middle of the cycle. I think it's just, just unfair to the process we've run to date. Um, the, the principles by which, as I said yesterday, by which we operate here under the United Nations Secretary General is as a multi-stakeholder forum to convene a conference that meets all the interests of multi-stakeholders across the world. Um, I think, a, you know, a model where Asians review proposals that come from Asia is fine for an Asian conference. I think for a global conference under the United Nations and under these rules, we've established that it would be under a multi-stakeholder review with a review of the full mag on all the proposals to create 
the program. Um, so I, I really need to ask you to help us figure, uh, need you to help us figure out how um, we can move forward given where we are in the process. And some of your suggestions should be taken up um, for next year's or future processes. So I, I will allow you to come back in, but I really would like completely to understand how we can move forward because that's going to be the final decision before we break for lunch so that we can move to substantive review of the proposals immediately following lunch. G, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, with due respect, I, try, I um, do back to uh, disagree with you. Um, we are in a diver living in a more and more diverse uh, world, and uh, this meeting, uh, IGF annual retreat, should be a chance for people from different countries to present themselves so the whole world can get the perspective of different region and different countries. We are not coming to Geneva to be brainwashed by European-centric standards. Thank you. Thank you, G. I don't think anybody is coming to any part of the world under an IGF process to be, um, to be brainwashed. Um, thank you. Appreciate your, your comments. I have four people in the queue before we come back. Um, my reading so far is that we have um, substantive support for the process as was outlined about an hour or so ago. And my proposal, again, is that we come back after lunch with that. The four speakers that are remaining, if you could comment specifically to that as well, um, which was the, the thread which we had actually opened with this um, set of floor speakers. So Cheryl, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, in response to that, I do support that and um, just wanted to follow up with respect to some of the comments made on the NRIs um, because the work that they're doing truly is very important, uh, in particular as we're talking about wanting to engage different um, developing world countries, et cetera. I thought I heard some, I was trying to listen, I thought I heard some support for doing something day zero. And so maybe tomorrow when we have a discussion with them, I think it would be good to hear from them. Um, we could talk a little bit more about that. So thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Aida, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. Yeah, there's also a little bit of disbalance when it comes to speaking. So Eastern Europe, where I come from, versus China, for example. So uh, around the NRIs, having NRIs, uh, the IGF is, I believe, the first step to having uh, more submissions, uh, which we talked about a lot today, by uh, the underrepresented regions proposals wise uh, in this year. So this is the way we can start this year by really welcoming NRIs to the IGF. Uh, because um, as we all remember from Anya's excellent presentation from yesterday, uh, examples of great practices of the way um, that uh, national and regional uh, NRIs work uh, are from the regions uh, who have the lowest or almost non-existent number of submitted proposals. Uh, or at least it seems like they were submitted by mistake because, come on, only four from Eastern Europe, it's not such a small region. Um, so one of these is uh, the mentioned CDIG, Southeastern European Dialogue on Internet Governance, and we have only three submissions. Uh, and it was many times mentioned as an example of the way they work in a really bottom-up and inclusive process, so there's something going wrong there. Uh, also, uh, I would like to know that NRIs are not one stakeholder group, group so this would increase the participation um, uh, stakeholder-wise. Uh, and then uh, the point that, um, to point out that there is no other way for them to organize a workshop as they are not a separate stakeholder group. Um, so uh, let's let NRI's participation this way be, uh, in this way be our way of encouraging them and meeting them sort of a halfway uh, for a better, their better participation uh, in the future. Uh, and on that note, another quick note uh, is to welcome the online participation by a representative of a new, only few weeks, um, new Macedonian IGF and they are already online following the work we do, but I also want to uh, share with you that they are um, wondering of the ways they can um, join the global conversation because now they are not sure um, how to, uh, if NRIs are not uh, accepted to the IGF, how they can be here. Uh, so the NRIs seem to give sort of a, a safe space of the way to get included in the IGF, and I think this is 
what we should, should consider if we want to be inclusive, bottom-up, and whatnot. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have three speakers left in the queue, and I recognize that we're three minutes over the hour. I hope people will um, stay through to the end of um, that uh, set of speaker lists. Um, and if people can, again, speak directly to the question that's open in front of the floor. Jack, you have the floor. Um, sir, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure something out, and I'm not sure if I'm actually answering the question that's open on the floor, because there's a whole bunch of things. And the question that I'm trying, I mean, the point of discussion that I'm really trying to figure out is the, is the I guess, the, the sort of sets of concerns that's coming out around the workshops that's dedicated to NRIs. Um, and what I'm hearing is everybody's 100% supportive of having a much more integrated, um, um, in having NRIs to be much more integrated in the global IGF in whatever way, shape or form. I think that's, there's no kind of disagreement in relation to that. Um, but, but from what I'm getting, maybe the question then is kind of the, a set of limitation in relation to what you know, the three or four days of IGF can do and what then one... I guess what, what is one at the cost of the other, possibly, and the role of MAG in relation to that, maybe. Um, I'm just, I don't really, I don't have clarity. I have a set of questions, I suppose. And we are having sort of more and more different kinds of formats, um, which is really great because it's responsive. It's trying to really support much more different kinds of ways of engagement beyond workshops. But maybe the, the lack of clarity then is what is the role of MAG in relation to some of these? Um, and that then are we also able to make sure that we are playing our role in, in, in trying to support the, the MAG agenda as a whole? Um, and maybe that's at the crux of it. So those are excellent questions. And at the same time, that is not the question that was on the floor. <laughs> um, that discussion is one um, we're hoping to have time to have tomorrow. And if not, we will move to a virtual MAG meeting. The question that's on the floor is a proposal that um, I made about an hour, an hour and a half ago. And Flavio had a couple of other um, comments as well with respect to other things that should be considered. And that was that we take the um, supposed imbalances in quotes and I'm, I won't go through the whole list again, but it was things like governments, IPv6, the various regional disparities. Um, Flavio's point was to look and understand whether or not there are some subjects we want to pull in, that we evaluate those as a full mag here against the criteria by which all the other proposals were evaluated, and we determine whether or not we want to pull some of those into the program. Also, we agreed that we would have a waiting list, um, which Cengatai had originally suggested and, and Flavio um, suggested as well, that would allow us to fill out any um, time slots that we find available. And Julian gave an example that said there were four flash sessions that were supported. Flash sessions are 30 minutes long, not 60 or 90, so that automatically frees up some slots. So to answer another question that was in my Skype chat room, 80 is not a hard number. Um, that is why the secretary has always had a bit of a waiting list, is because you never know how many slots you have until you actually have all the workshop proposals in with respect to their respective time requirements. So the proposal was that we begin going forward substantively, concretely, um, proposal by proposal, to try and get to a list of 80 plus some waiting list so that we can actually move forward with the program. I have three, two more speakers in the queue. My reading so far is that there was substantive support for that in the room. And I see heads nodding yes again. Um, that means we would come back after lunch and start that immediately. And I will work with the secretariat over lunchtime to pull together the list of whatever we have today. I suspect there are probably a few more in people's minds out here that haven't kind of made it up to the top of the list yet. And we'll simply add those in, but we'll pull together that list. We obviously have the government's list. Chengatai sent it out. We have the wild card list from yesterday. Um, we have a suggestion on the four MENA proposals. Um, you know, there's some things which we, IPv6 is another one. There are some that we know that we can pull in, and we would top that up with any others that um, haven't come through. That's the proposal we're, we're um, going to be working towards after lunch. Um, I believe, on the basis of consensus um, across the MAG. Um, with that, I have Zena in the queue and then Arnold. Zena, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Uh, as we are going to look into uh, covering the, um, ge the geographical imbalance issue uh, by using the wild cards uh, solution, uh, can we please uh, just also uh, take a look at the proposals uh, countries of origin? I mean, I would prefer having a uh, proposal sent by uh, uh, two countries uh, which will which will uh, uh, enforce diversity even within the same region, but also on the national levels. Uh, for example, uh, I will I will give you the example of what we have in the MENA region. I have two proposals that I recommended. I proposed as wild card. They were proposed by one Lebanese and one Iraqi, and the other one is from one Lebanese, one Moroccan. For at uh, for my understanding. As we are in Lebanon establishing now, uh, and we officially announced the Lebanese uh, national IGF, I think this collaboration on the uh, workshop level might lead to uh, further collaboration or encour encouraging the other to establish its uh, other national initiative. That is something I, I was uh, hoping that you take into consideration. Also, the uh, national diversity of the proposals. Okay. I, I actually think that is the process we're following. Um, maybe there's something I'm not understanding in yours, but certainly those two proposals, if you can make sure that the Secretariat has those proposal numbers as well. I think they would be put... put um, put forward for review. Arnold, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Arnold van Rijn speaking, MAC member and representative of the Dutch government. I would like to um, uh, strongly object formally to uh, what my distinguished uh, Chinese colleague said in his latest intervention. Uh, literally, he said, we are not coming to Geneva to be brainwashed by European-centric standards. I think this statement is going too much too far. We are operating here under UN rules, which are fair rules and criteria, where every region in the world can put forward their own proposals to come up with a good program for the IGF. That's our main goal. That's what the Secretary General of the UN has instructed us. So accusing a certain region in the world, brainwashing others, it's going much too, fur, uh, too far, in my view. And I would like to ask my distinguished Chinese colleague to be more cooperative in the near future and in our discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arnold. Xi, you've requested the floor. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to say that uh, I have no intention to apologize for what I have said. Uh, the pie we see earlier indicates that in the top 72, more than half is from Europe. If that is not Europe-centric, what is Europe-centric? If, if that situation, that's that kind of uh, makeup is not changed. I'm not ready to talk any of the, those particular proposals among the 72. These 72 have to be changed uh, in accordance with the principle of geographic equity and the balance. Thank you very much. I think we're looking for a level of civil discourse here, um, and we don't quite have that fully yet. So I would like us to come back after lunch and really reestablish that basis. Disagreement is fine. Difference of opinions is fine. Um, but really getting back to an appropriate level of civil discourse would be appropriate. Um, you know, there's also saying statistics damn statistics. Um, we've heard, heard numerous examples of the fact that this high-level view of the um, percentages of proposers and first time in developing country and regional, et cetera, doesn't go deeply enough and that it doesn't show that a proposer might have been from one country, one region, but the other four panelists are from four other regions. And that's lost in those statistics. Um, at the same time, 
one of our cre key criteria in evaluating the workshops was diversity, diversity of, of geographic diversity, diversity of stakeholder. So we have to believe that within our process, with the grading that was done by the MAG, that, that since diversity was such a key characteristic, that the panels that have made it through have significant diversity. If anybody saw a panel, or, or uh, sorry, saw a workshop session that was all from one region or didn't have appropriate level of diversity, it should have been rated very low. Um, so we're, we're going to move forward on the basis of what I think has been um, consensus for a process, as I outlined a few moments ago. We're going to come back after lunch and we will start working through those proposals. Um, I would suggest that we start um, either with the governments or maybe we start with the government one first and then we will expand the wild card list to include some of these other ones that have come in today, the MENA region and the one that Julian suggested and, and that sort of thing and get a, a concrete list in front of everybody. So with that, I thank everybody. I thank you all in particular for staying on a bit later. At 2 o'clock back in this room, we have a presentation by our esteemed DESA colleague on the um, IGF Trust Fund. And encourage everybody, when you're running into people at lunch, to get additional support for the um, IGF activities. And that would actually go a long way to helping us resource better some of our efforts. So thank you.